Okay. Okay. Let's let's start this. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna start with a very simple task today. Actually, let's let's start by 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 seeing what we've done uh, last uh, last stream. Let's see what uh, in what state the game is in. Okay, so you can play. We have the the tower is being generated, but that's that's old news. Uh, and I think what we've worked on last week was the wave manager and the enemy manager. Let's see what the what does this do. So you can specify a wave. I mean, yeah. And then you you basically set up the game, and then yeah, it's gonna spawn enemies on the wave definition asset, which just says yeah, spawn to enemies after uh, yeah. The spawn to enemies and the spawn rate is uh, 2 per second and after they reach the top or, or more like after they are dead after they, uh, the enemies are dead uh, they have a countdown uh, yeah yeah a countdown uh, which is the the cooldown between waves after which a new wave should start but uh, we haven't stopped that part yet that's what we're gonna work on today uh, a, li a little bit later but yeah so this is what we have, I don't know another wave have we set up yeah we have something set up here let's uh, let's try this yeah this has a lot more enemies but it's the same same principle it spawns the enemies when they reach the top they die that's, that's the work right now and after every each one of them is dead a cooldown starts, a cooldown of the 10 seconds starts, and after which, uh, yeah, anyone who's interested uh, will be notified that, uh, that the wave is completed. Yeah, so one thing that we're gonna do, so, so the first thing that we're gonna do actually um, is, so, so I've implemented the skip cooldown uh, functionality last time. So, and, I've, and I've added a button in the in the inspector. Uh, what I'd like to do is have a button in the game as well, uh, like we have for speed, so we can uh, so we can click it. Hello, Adrian. How are you? Yeah. So that's what uh, what we're gonna do. We're gonna implement this uh, this small button. It's gonna take like two minutes or something. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be good for when we. Hmm. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that tower defense are, are fun, man. I don't know. I really enjoy working on, on this game. It's really nice. I mean, actually, yeah, tower defense. But uh, yeah, this idea with uh, that we have with the with the actual tower. Yeah, I, I had some uh, so some fun problems to solve, and uh, yeah, it really got me going. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I'm glad I'm not doing balancing. Uh, Zara's gonna take care of that, so <laughs> I, I, I'm just uh, making sure uh, uh, he has uh, good editors for that. Hello, motion. Okay, so what was I saying? Yeah, so so let's make the a button for that. Uh, let's just get one that we have. So. Uh, Skip cooldown. Yeah, I know that I think about it. So yeah, I was thinking of making a button for this, but uh, I should probably also display the cooldown on the screen. That would make sense. So this has to be a twenty. Let's change the text. Actually, let's copy the text from here and paste it in the button. Just uh, put it a bit down. Hey, are not minus twenty minus uh, seventy. Yeah, that looks fine. Let's just uh, set up the click. So on the wave manager, we should do some skip something. Skip cooldown. There we go. Now I wonder what's gonna happen if I 
so on this one it's not okay so nothing's happening when, when the wave is not uh, not started let's try to run a wave let's run this short one okay so we have a wave let's try to skip it doesn't do anything let's see if it breaks something after they're dead it's not I click on it yeah so it just skip the cooldown and and uh, and it's done yeah okay so so the button works i should probably also uh display the the, the cooldown time on, on the screen but uh, yeah actually i should oh nice that's that good motion which one Okay, so let's do that also. Let's uh, display the, uh, the, the the cooldown on the screen. Oh, and it's good that we're actually here. So let's see how how do we want to actually no. Let, let's make the 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 text on the screen, and after that let's uh, let's do the the code. Uh, not 3D object, but UI. Visor. Ah, that's cool. I did uh, AstraZeneca. It was it was fine. No, no side effects. Um, I copy this. Copy component. Yeah. Let's paste this. Awesome. Let's make it a bit smaller. Let's see, twenty-four pixels maybe. And let's move it. Where's the button? It's 240. Let's move it at 240. There we go. And let's. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna write the the the. Yeah, I don't know. Except for um, high fever. Uh, the night where, uh, when I had my first shot. Um, yeah, it, it was okay. And even the high fever was not a big deal because I, I slept through it. I had some uh, some funny dreams and some hallucinations during the night, but yeah, I, I was okay after uh, after a good sleep. Let's see how we can do this. Uh, uh, the first dose. For for AstraZeneca, usually the 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 bad stuff happens after the first shot. The second is uh, uh, yeah, usually doesn't happen any after the second one. I don't think I've done a. Hmm. I think we're gonna use the lo localized uh, string as well here. Even though we're gonna only use the. We're gonna. Oh no! No, if we use the localized string, we can actually write something cute there. Okay, so let's um, let's see. Let's get. Table. Let's make a new entry in the table. Um, what should we call it? Uh, uh, wave cooldown. Wave cooldown. That's okay. It's gonna be a smart string. Um, cooldown and. Something like this, and in Romanian, yeah, we're gonna call it because I don't know what. I don't know what, how I should translate "cool down" in in Romanian, but yeah, we're gonna leave it like this. Let's make this. Uh, let's save this. Actually, actually, yeah. Variables, global variables another variable which is gonna be a float I guess 
Well, let's leave it at zero. And there's another thing I have to do, but I don't know where I've put it. That's not. Uh, ah, shit. Where have I put that? Actually, I don't know. I don't even know what what's what thing is called actually. So I made the uh, bean utils. I doubt it. Yeah. So. Okay, so so I have no idea where that piece of code is, which is not good because I thought my my, my code was arranged correctly, arranged logically, but I don't know where I is it in managers. Doesn't make sense to put it in managers. Okay, so I have I have a piece of code that I don't know where I put it, and I need it now. So that. What the fuck? Where's that thing? Where did I put it? Okay, yeah, this is... Oh, it should be in UI. It doesn't... It doesn't make sense to Put it in UI. It's not here. Where the hell have I put this shit? Oh, here we go. Game UI manager. This is the one. God damn it. Okay. Actually, it doesn't make s game UI manager. It doesn't really make sense to call it that. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe I should generalize it. Um. Okay, so let's edit this and add our wave cooldown. It's also a float variable and on awake. Uh, not sure about Yart. I haven't talked to Zarnot yet. Uh, we have our weekly meeting uh, tomorrow, so. He he hasn't told me anything yet. I hope he has some um, some good news, but I'm not sure. Okay, so now all I have to do is create a variable for this uh, for this cooldown. Yeah, for now, for now we're just gonna use uh, uh, dummy dummy elements for the for the things in the game. Like I have spheres for the enemies right now. So the so the development is gonna keep going even though we don't have art and we don't know what direction we're gonna take the art. Yeah, I have no idea how, how the game is going to look like uh, at the end. But, uh, at least functionally, we have a, a good idea what, what what's going to look like. What was I going to do? Yeah, yeah so, so let's make a variable which is a float. We cool down, let's put it in the in this manager. And now we have to this wave manager and add a variable. Um, so we're gonna need something similar to this cooldown. Let's call it UI. It's gonna be a float variable. Let's just update it here. So cooldown UI dot value. What the fuck value is this? Hmm. Actually, I could use the variable instead of the instead of this timer. But yeah, whatever. 
let's just uh, do it like this for now. Okay, so wave cooldown. Let's save this. Uh, I don't know if I have set up. Um... No, I haven't even selected what what I'm gonna use from this. Okay, so I'm gonna use the wave cooldown. Those are the translations, and let's update the text. So in here, um, this one and the text. Okay, let's save this. Let's play. Cooldown zero. That's amazing. Let's start a wave and test this shit. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I have an input for this. I can actually move on the tower. Oh wait, what the hell? Ah, never mind. They we're not prone. Okay. Oh, so the cooldown works. Skip cooldown. Awesome. Not actually that awesome. To do um, what do I want to do? The maximum, yeah, of uh, zero and the cooldown timer, and also, no, actually, I can't do that and change how it's displayed on the screen. Yeah, whatever, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it like this. I should probably make it an, an int, but uh, whatever. It's five for now. Maybe I should make the the input. Uh, let's make it bigger. Um, so, so this one. Let's make the width like five hundred pixels. Yeah, sure. Why not? Actually, yeah. But I have to change it in the actual scene, but not in play mode. Um, come on. So five hundred pixels. Let's save this, let's try it again. Yeah, awesome. That doesn't do shit. Uh, if I go to the wave manager, invo uh, not invoke, I have to select the wave first, invoke. Bum bum, and I should use fast mode, so it goes faster. Okay, skip cooldown. Awesome. Okay, so we have the button and we also have the down on the screen. Let's change the default text because it's ugly. Cooldown zero or whatever. Okay, so I guess the task is done. Let's commit the changes. The lab. Uh, this is the feature. Publish. Just publish it. Don't be silly. There we go. Good. So, okay. So the next one is gonna be also a simple task. So, um, so so actually, yeah, the task is uh, is called create a game manager. Um, and for now, what I want from the game manager is to, um, yeah, to to, to be able to play and pause the the game by pressing escape. Um, so that's that's a lot for now. So so you my idea the, the the game editor has a high uh, uh, a high level overview over the game and what's happening. And for now, his only purpose uh, is to is to pause and uh, unpause the game. But we we do have right now a, a game manager, um, which does a couple of things. So we're gonna we're gonna modify this one. So right now, uh, this is so. So this function is is was in here. It should be moved. But the most important thing that it does is this, which which we're gonna keep. So, uh, so we have this lifecycle service that I've talked previously about, which is which basically tells us the the state of the game, which it has some. So it's uninitialized by default. It's gonna be initializing while the game is loading. And every, yeah, while, while everything is loading, then it's going to initialize when everything has uh, finished loading. Then playing paused and stopped. Stopped being uh, like a like an end state. You can't come back from that. Let's say you you've uh, uh, finished the game, finished the level, finished the whatever, and we're gonna go stopped and you can go back from that. It's like uh, okay, everything is finished. You have to I don't know 
reload the game or something to to start it all over again yeah so what's happening in the game manager is we're listening for the initialized uh, state and if we if uh, yeah when that's uh, that's triggered we're just gonna set the the state to playing immediately because because we don't want to do anything in the future we might do like show some uh, ui on the screen or something do some transitions on the screen when everything is loaded but for now we just want to tra transition immediately so yeah okay so we have this um we're gonna keep this and we we're also gonna need the um I guess a controls manager, that's what I'm looking for. Let's just make sure that's the, yeah, this is my component. That's what we want. And we have the camera actions. Yeah, we're gonna need, um, we're gonna need some new, some new controls in the, in the game. So let's set that up. Okay, so I don't want, doesn't have anything to do with the camera. But also, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you. Yeah, I made you want to work on your on your stuff. Yeah, it's so. So right now, I'm only working on this project uh, during the streams. Um, I mean, actually working like coding for it. I'm I'm doing planning and uh, other brainstorming stuff uh, this week. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, yeah. While I'm at work, like uh, my day job, I'm always thinking of uh, of the game. Uh, uh, I can't wait for Saturday to come to to start to start working on it. It's actually yeah, it's actually quite fun to work on on this game. It's uh, yeah, it has some challenging things, some interesting problems that I had to solve and still have to solve. Uh, Uh, no, so I have something that I kind of use for planning, so it's this thing, it's kind of a mess, what's here, but basically I've took all the features that we have, so so we do have a, um, we do have a design design document with uh, everything uh, laid out in here that's uh, that's what we started with before started working on the game and i've took everything from here and plopped it down on, on in, in this uh, in this thing and just expanded from there so everything that has a a yellow background is is a uh, is uh, something from the from the um, gd and everything that that's uh, just text is uh, is uh, or are things that uh, that I've added. And uh, yeah, so I just started expanding everything here. Sometimes I get uh, I get questions about things that I that I want to do, and uh, I have to answer them before continuing. But yeah, so so I've plopped plopped down everything in here, started expanding it, and now I can just. Uh, cherry pick uh, tasks from here and uh, st uh, or ideas of what I should do and start making tasks from this. So some, some parts like the enemies are not that that expanded but uh, I have some I started working on them but uh, just a small part but I have to expand uh, a lot of uh, yeah. I have, I have I, ow god damn it I have to expand this more but uh, actually uh, we're gonna work on this today later on I don't know, in a couple of hours, so we're gonna do that live. But yeah, yeah, I I put everything in here. It's this document is mainly just for me. So I, so if if the, this uh, organization doesn't make sense, it's because it makes sense only to me because I've made it, and uh, yeah, it's just so I I keep track of what I've done and uh, what else uh, I have to do. What else is uh, yeah ready to to start and make tasks and uh, work on them yeah so back to to the sprint yeah so getting back to this so so uh actually let's get obs back on the screen okay so 
Uh, I was looking at this and the, 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 the first action map that I've defined was what was or is called camera. But now that I think about it, there's no other actions that I need for the camera. So I don't know if I should uh, keep calling it camera because we're going to have other buttons. They're not going to be linked to the camera, at least not directly. So, might rename this, but I'm, I'm not sure what I should call it. I just call it game. Like, controls for the game. But, this is what this file is all about. The, the game control. So, I might make an, I shouldn't make an action map different for... I'm not sure. Actually, let's let's just start by doing let's let's make a new I uh, action map. I'm gonna reorganize those if if uh, uh, if it doesn't work out. So I'm not gonna say it's for pausing the game. I'm just gonna call it escape. Um, yeah, I can actually escape. Okay. Uh, let's click on keyboard. Okay, listen for escape. Ah, oh, come on! I can't. I can't use escape to. I mean, it doesn't. Ah, god damn it. Um. Ah, I know why. But I don't know. It's it's put on button. I don't know why why it doesn't show up in here. I should see see the key. There we go. Here we go. Here's the keyboard. Um. So can I now search for escape? Yes. Okay. So I put escape. I guess I should do something similar for for the gamepad. Uh, add binding. But I don't know. I don't know what I should what I should use or what's the the button called. Let's see if we have something. Uh, select or start. I don't know which one. Let, let me get a controller. And of course, there's nothing written on the freaking controller. So I don't know which button is which. Maybe the 361? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I want the start button. This is the, the one from the right. Okay. So let's look at all schemes. Yeah, this looks fine. Let's save this. Let's go back here. We're gonna make a small change to the controls manager because we want to expose the this uh, UI, uh, this, uh, those UI controls. So UI actions, and let's call this UI. And we have to change. Yeah, there we go. And now, oh my God, so much unused imports in here. Let's remove everything. We go much better okay so so here uh, let's continue with this so ui actions dot escape dot performed let's attach something to this but let's uh, make actually no uh let's do like this wait i can't yeah there we go Okay, so uh, this is context. Even though I don't need it, but let's call it correctly. Um, yeah, so we're go we're gonna do a set state. Or um, actually no, we're gonna first look if it's playing or if it's playing or if it's paused. Hmm, I don't wanna check twice. Okay, so no var. Is play uh is playing yeah. is playing if is playing or is paused if 
playing we're gonna do it's pause otherwise playing okay so now if the game is playing we're gonna pause it otherwise we're gonna if it's pause we're gonna play it and if we're in another state um, we're, we're, we're not gonna do anything okay so this should do it uh, the only thing that we have to do is go to the to the what to the game manager and assign the controls manager so we have reference and now um, let's get this here so we can see the, the state so now if I press escape yeah it toggles between playing and pause let's actually see that it works so let's the wave let's use this longer now if it's pause it stops if it's play it stopped so this works nice cool so we have this and actually that's that's ho the whole task that's all i wanted to do for this so that's cool okay let's commit those changes and let's start working on something more uh interesting i guess lab dear this error because it's annoying also feature Publish. Awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the level manager. So right now we have. Uh, let's actually let's start uh, in time for this. So right now we have the wave manager, which basically um, yeah takes care of the the current the current wave. So. You you give it away uh, a wave definition file uh, which looks like um, like this. It basically says, okay, I want to spawn some enemies, and you have a list of uh, enemies you want to spawn, and you define what enemy type, how many do you want, and how fast do you want them, and also specify multiplayers, which right now they're stupidly set up because it doesn't make sense. But you can change. Uh, uh, their statistics, uh, so the enemy statistics, you can, I don't know, increase health, increase the, the strength and something, else, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so this is a wave, so you, you go to the wave manager, give it a wave, it's gonna start spawning those enemies. Uh, after which, we have that cooldown that we saw, and, uh, yeah, after after the, the cooldown, uh, it's gonna trigger an event in in uh, in code. So whoever wants to listen to that uh, will be notified when the when the wave is done. So now what we wanna do is so we have the concept of levels. So so levels are a, a group of of waves, um, which which are gonna be played on a on a on a piece of the tower. So so this considered so 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 this piece of tower plus let's say 10 waves would be considered a level in our game um and we have that uh, so we've made that in previous streams uh, is this level definition asset in which uh, right now you you can't control how the tower behaves right now the tower is generated randomly with uh, all the available pieces that we have but we're going to be able to control um what pieces are going to be yeah, are going to be used uh, in a specific uh, level, but for now we only we only um, specify the waves in the in the level. So yeah, we have this uh, this level definition uh, file in which you can specify the waves. So yeah, right now it's telling me that I haven't set uh, any waves in this. So yeah, it's just basically a list of 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 waves, and yeah. Um, what uh, what the level uh, yeah the level level manager is gonna do? He's gonna have a, a reference to this level definition, and it's gonna uh, tell the wave manager to yeah basically to start spawning or yeah he's gonna set up the wave manager for each wave individually, one after the other. Unless I don't know the you you died and uh, the game stops. But yeah, it's not gonna, the, the, the level measure is not going to do 
a lot of stuff. But, uh, but it, not for now. Right now he's only gonna, yeah, he's gonna have a reference to this level definition. He's gonna play the, the waves one after the other. Okay, so let's start working on that. So we have the level definition. Let's clear everything, actually. So we have the level definition. Let's make a le uh, level uh, manager. Uh, this will be... Yeah, this will be just a mono behavior, I guess. Because the... Um, where is that? The wave manager is also mono behavior. Yeah, so we have the level manager. Um, hmm. Yeah, so we'll need a reference to the uh, waves manager. Wave manager, not with an S. It's a singular. So the wave manager, let's make this a serialized field. Uh, on complete. Complete on wave manager complete. And in here, um, um, yeah, so we're gonna have a, a oh, hmm. set up next way. We're gonna have a method that's gonna be called like this. It's gonna return nothing, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna go to the wave manager and it's gonna do setup. And this requires a wave definition, so now we'll need that level definition so we can get the, the wave out of it. So, level definition, level definition, uh, we're gonna want to know what the current wave is. Okay. Let's see. So let's increase the current wave. So we get the next one, and if current wave is less than the level definition dot waves count, um, or no, if it's uh more or equal. We're gonna return or yeah, we should do something here but for now let's return. Um, because someone's gonna listen to this to 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 the level being uh um when the level is finished. But for now we're just gonna return and just uh, stop But yeah, so we're gonna, if it's not in the case, we first still, we, we still have waves to, to play. We're gonna get the wave at the, the current index and we're gonna set up the wave manager to, to use that. Okay. One other thing, I guess. Yeah, so we'll need a, for now at least, Private void um, another setup function like we have for the wave manager, but this one is for the level. For the yeah, it's gonna set up the level. So level definition equals to the level definition. Uh, 
Actually, let's uh, duplicate this. Let's only keep this line. Let's call it setup wave. Let's make this zero and let's set, let's set up the wave. So it starts with the first one. Yeah, and let's put a button in this. So we can see what's happening. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it actually. Yeah. Well, that I have to check, but I think I've done that, but just to be sure. Um, yeah, actually, uh, in the in the wave manager, we have this cooldown. Yeah, so it's only only running when when the game is playing. Okay, so actually, this is it for. I mean, it's not. We have this this to do. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do here, but um, for now we're gonna do it like this. Actually, let's do something here. Let's um. Let's do a console log in here, or whatever. A log console is in JavaScript. Let's just call it done. Let's import our logger. Yeah. Yeah, that should be it. I mean, for now. Let's try it. So... Level manager. Level manager. This is the wave manager, and that's it. ah. I'm gonna I have to remove that monoscript because it looks ugly. Die. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So now we can try it. Let's play the game. Let's get this wave manager in. Here. Let's use the level. I'll just invoke it. There we go. This is the first wave going. And after all the enemies are dead, the cooldown starts. Nice. Let's skip. And if I skip it, the next wave should start. And here we have it. The next wave started uh, immediately after the cooldown was done. After all the enemies are uh, dead, cooldown is gonna start again and after the cooldown is done uh, we're gonna get the done message from the from the level manager there we go level manager set up next wave done awesome so this works now instead of uh, yeah triggering waves manually uh, we can trigger a whole level and uh, yeah that's gonna that's gonna play uh, every from that level. So now we can get back to this actually. So there are a couple of things that that we want to do here. So that we want to happen. Um, first of all, okay. Let, let me let me see if I can show you this, or um, I might just be able to get this. Uh, Um, so where would that be? So this is the level, it might be in the tower. Expansion levels? Yeah. So after a set number of waves, the player will receive the option to expand via the, yeah, next level button, which we don't have yet, but we're gonna have soon. But it's not actually what, uh, what I wanted, but, oh, we do have waves. Okay, so 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 there there is okay, there's something that I'm looking for, but I'm not exactly sure where I would find it. Yeah, but anyway, so so th the idea is that um, you play a level, you play every wave from the list, which in this case there are only two waves, and after after those are done, you have the option to to go to the next level. Or you can uh, keep playing the current level and you can grind on it and we're gonna just play you random waves from the from the list until you 
press a button on the screen that says uh, advance to the next level. Uh, why you would want that? So yeah, after yeah, when you when you to the next level, basically getting a new yeah a new section of the tower. Um, you you will get back all the money that you've used plus I don't know 20 percent. So so you get a little a, a little bit more money each, each time, and you can create um, yeah you can start. Uh, uh, Populating the new the new tower with uh, with new yeah with, with with weapons basically you have uh, you'll have some some time to to do that and also you're gonna do some upgrades because uh, after each level you you're gonna get some uh, uh, some uh, currency that's specific for 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 doing upgrades so you can yeah so you can buy upgrades basically um. Yeah, but that but that doesn't matter. What, what I wanted to get at is uh, we have to have uh, some kind of event. So we, so we have to trigger some kind of event here, uh, so we can show that button on the screen. So, or yeah, so so we can hook uh, to the event and show the button on the screen. Uh, and also, we want to keep continuing showing levels, but not. Uh, uh, in a sequential order, but after we've uh, finished everything, we want to just uh, start uh, random waves. So, yeah, the random waves should be fairly easy to do. So we're going to start with that. So I guess we're gonna do instead of a, a, a setup wave, we're gonna do. So let's duplicate this. Setup random wave. Actually, I don't like to. Ha I don't like it. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah, let's let's call it. Uh, oh no, random wave. Get random wave, which is gonna be. We're gonna return this. Not this, but um. So. Uh oh, not it's it's random, but not random from uh system. We have. I don't want random from system, I want random from unit. Random range from zero to level definition dot waves count and this is don't tell me it's a it's it's a float. No it is this int awesome. So we get a wave, let's change the return type to wave definition. Okay, so gonna give us a random wave let's make this an expression body because it looks better get current wave let's do the current wave here and now what I want to do in this setup wave I'm gonna add a parameter with the definition and whatever I need to use it Gonna call those. Actually, those can be properties. And I should remove the get from the front. Current wave. Current wave here as well. Let's put this on uh, nails, maybe. And here, let's. Um, wave and this can actually be done like this so if we still haven't gone through all the waves in the list we're gonna do the current wave otherwise we're just gonna choose a, a random wave and I might want to invert this because it might um, I mean yeah I want to negate it 
Well, that's stupid. Yeah, so I want this to be so current wave is less than the, the wave count. So let's just we're gonna do the current wave, otherwise, we're gonna do a random one. This might be actually let, let's do a login here so we can see so we can log the name of the wave. Um, hmm, I wonder if I should do it here or in the setup uh, method in the wave manager. I might do it there actually. Yeah, let's do it there. This makes uh, uh, it makes much more sense to have it in here. Wave definition dot name is not the level manager, the wave manager. Yeah, let's get it like this. And we're gonna make, uh, yeah, actually that's it. And we're gonna make more waves so we have a uh, have more diversity. So let's go project tower waves wave definition. Come on. The third. Wave definition. Let's put our dummy enemy one count spawn. Sure. Oh, we're in play mode. Let's get out of play mode and let's do another one. That should be enough. Uh, this and this. The final wave definition. Final wave definition, let's use the dummy enemy, count of 10, spawn rate, let's do whole unit per second, sure. Let's save this and let's go to the level and add those waves. Um, the third should be the third. Third, like this, let's save and let's try it. Okay, level manager, we get the level, we invoke it, and yeah, wave def I'm gonna, I should put some, some numbers on those, but that's, that's the first one in the list. So here is this one, let's keep the cooldown. Here's the second one, another wave definition. Let's wait for this to finish as well. I should maybe add a... Uh, enemies count uh, yeah text on the screen so we know how many enemies there are mm, maybe let's keep this uh that was not good so we skipped it and then i should just move this the third wave definition it just have i done something stupid with this so the third they have a count of one and one per second. So why did it just uh, skip it? I don't know why this happened. I have to look into it. But anyway, yeah, it, apparently it skipped it. Let's get the next one. This one seems to work. And after this, it should just yeah, the call started again. And if we skip this. Yeah, it just chose a random wave and it's yeah, it starts. And uh, remove this cooldown because uh, we don't need it anymore. Yeah, cool, cool. So it so it started a, a random uh, a random wave. Now we just it's gonna just keep going until we go to the next level we haven't implemented it actually okay that's not cool it shows the same uh, the same wave so I, I might have to do some uh, uh, I might have to prevent this from choosing the same wave um, twice in a row okay now this is stupid If, but I, but I did a rant there. Why did it choose the same one? 
Now it chose another. Okay, so yeah, bad luck, I guess. But yeah, I chose a, a random one. Yeah, I chose the first one. Okay, so so this one. look into this um, let's go to the level and put this uh, third wave to be the second one and see what happens because uh, and also let's remove the so let's go to the wave manager and remove this log from here this one we're gonna keep the done one because that's uh, that's okay yeah, but let's see. Let's see what happens now. So let's start this again. Invoke. Yeah, so the uh, the first wave started. I'm gonna wait for this to end. This end. Let's keep. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't want to do the third wave. And I wonder if it's if it's because it has only one enemy. Hmm. Let's look at the wave. Actually, the wave manager. No, the enemy manager, which is the the one that does the uh, kind of does the spawning actually. So this is the setup. We give it a list of things that it has to spawn. It's gonna a spawner for each of those, which is going to be only one spawner. So it goes to the pool, it gets an enemy spawner, it's going to set it up. Let's see what happens in the setup. Says authority, uh, sets up this, spawn the enemy zero, spawn timer, and a do spawn. Which increases this, spawn, and stop spawning. Oh, huh. I think this happens um Okay, so let's do let's put some breakpoints. So I want to break it here and I also want to go to where do I want to go? Uh, the dummy enemy? No, I want to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have to take a short break. I'm gonna be back in like two minutes.
Okay, I'm back. Um, so where were we? Oh yeah, so so we were debugging this. Yeah, so so, 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 so the problem was that we only spawn one enemy, but we actually don't even have time to spawn it because the because it just keeps the, the 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 wave entirely. I think I know why. But we, uh, yeah, we have to put some breakpoint. So yeah, this is what I was looking for. Check this out. Actually, we can do. I'm looking the. Nah, I guess we can't. No, let's look at let's look at this. Okay, so so where where have we put? Yeah, we put one in spawning. Let's put one in spawn also. We might have to do this. Um, yeah, after uh, yeah, like the next frame or something, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's. let's for now, let's attach the debugger. Yeah, enable debugging, please. Okay, so we're we're attached, and uh, let's. The game. Actually, let's make this first level, like this uh, problematic level, be the first one. Uh, yeah, we have to set this up first. Bam. Okay, so now we've hit the spawn. It comes from where does it come from? From the enemy manager. Yeah. So, so the setup. Yada yada. We do the setup on the enemy spawner, on spawn, and then we're here, which is amazing. What I would like to see the next thing uh, should be, no, the next thing it would be this. Stop. Oh yeah, we also no, not in the in the enemy manager. We want something here. We want this. Yeah, yeah, here in the update. Okay, so let's go next. It stopped the spawning because after we spawned the single enemy, yeah, this this uh, statement is true. So it uh, immediately stopped the spawning, which is okay. Is a sign is true. Oh yeah, no, that is fine. It's, uh, just the internal state to see if uh, if we have a set. Yeah, so that's that's okay. We get here. Alive enemies is not empty, which is correct, because we do have an enemy spawned. And I don't know what this evaluates to, but let's see. But um, this this I think this will. Evaluate to true, yeah. Because we look at all the spawners that we have, which is one at the moment, because we have only one enemy type. And uh, yeah, there are enemies left to spawn in uh, in the spawner, but it is not empty, which means that we should. Uh, let's look at on this tree also. Yeah, there we go. We have we have our. Our enemy here. So now it works. It is weird that it works. I was not expecting it to work. Now it's destroyed. It's gonna remove itself from the set. Let's put this breakpoint back in here. 
now we're here and this is gonna be empty yeah now it's gonna go inside the, the if statement okay uh let's do this again but now let's put the uh, this problematic wave to be the second one in the list and see what happens because what I think happens, why, why it doesn't work is uh, before uh, we add the enemy to the to this to this list of uh, alive enemies, this update method is gonna trigger. It's gonna say okay. So so we 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 spawn the enemy, but the the start on the enemy hasn't uh, or the enemy was not has not been yet added to this to this list. So yeah, this this if might. Uh, might be true before uh, before the enemy is actually spawned, but then we should see him, cause cause he, he's only gonna be destroyed when he's at the end of the. Uh, not the enemy spawner. Actually, now I want to look at the dummy enemy. Put a... Yeah, let's put that there. Let's see what happens. Okay. Getting back to this, I might just uh, reset the, the the position in here. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, actually, no. Let's uh, stop the breakpoints for for the first wave because we don't need it for this. Level definition. It's gonna start the first uh, wave. We're gonna wait for this to end, and after that, actually, we're gonna pause the game. Right here, let's enable the breakpoints and let's start again. Let's keep the cooldown and now we're here. So we're spawning the enemy as we should. The next thing that happens, we're stopped the spawning because, yeah, that's uh, that's what's uh, happening because there's only one enemy. Then we're here, and that's exactly what I thought would happen. So, so the, the start. On the yeah, on this component which adds the the enemy to, to the list, the start hasn't happened uh, hasn't happened yet. So now it says that the list is empty and all the enemies have been spawned, which is not correct. Yeah, so huh. I don't know how I should fix this though. Never gonna be called. I'm stupid. This is never going to be called. I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. Yeah, so the problem is that it's not that it was not called. That's not the issue. The issue is that. And that's why it worked the first time. This thing. It's only called when we spawn the whatever object uh, we attach this to. We should also do a on enable as if and also the same thing for this destroy or on disable. Which now that I think about it, uh, we should do a check in here if we actually want to to remove it on enable and disable because we might not want that so let's put a private um wait are we stopped here for some reason okay uh let's uh, mute the mute those okay so uh, cool um 
and the I don't know, I don't have a better name for this, but it's gonna be by default. Let's do a serialized field here. If set is signed, and actually let's do this. There we go. So now we can go to our dummy enemy which would be in here and we can check this and now when we play the game and let's uh so we have the breakpoints muted that's okay level definition actually let's put a, a breakpoint here so we don't forget but let's invoke the level so the the first one started Let's wait for it to end. Okay, let's pause this. Let's enable our breakpoints again. And let's unpause this and let's keep the cooldown. Okay, we spawn the enemy. And now if hit the on enable, this is gonna be true. Set is assigned, so this is true. So we're gonna add it to the list. The next thing is we're gonna stop the spawning and now hitting the update in here. But the list is now uh, is now uh, is not empty now, so we're not gonna enter the if. And for some reason, we also trigger the start. Why did we trigger the start? Not entirely sure. This still works, so. It's fine by me. So let's mute those and yeah. Now it works as expected. Let's uh let's try it again but without the the breakpoints. Let's see it in action. So the first wave. They're doing their things. Let's keep the cooldown and now the second wave. Let's wait for this to end and let's hope that we see the third one starting. Or I mean, we have the cooldown and then we have this. Nice. Cool. Let's just, uh, let's just keep going and uh, check it till the end. Okay, so now this is the final wave. Gonna get the cooldown again, yeah. Let's keep this again, and now we got a random wave definition. Nice. Let's um, reorder those. Okay, so we fixed the bug, which is amazing. Uh, let's remove all our breakpoints because we don't need them anymore. Awesome, done. And now, okay, so we've we've done the level manager. We have the random wave. The only thing uh, left to do is that event that we want to trigger when the. And actually, for that, uh, we're gonna need the uh, if else back in here. Um, I guess. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna have to do some something here. So we have the level manager. I wonder how how I should do this. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna. Hit the event on. On complete. Yeah. 
private clone I don't have a better name for this, I'm gonna call it flag. Let's make this false in here too. And let's see. So what I wanna do is, so I want this to, uh, it doesn't know how to make this a, uh, an if again. If this, then we get the, setup wave current wave otherwise we're gonna get a random the random wave so let's remove this and here when the random wave is happening uh, should I do it before or after I think before so if uh, no on whatever this with a knot in front make it true and invoke it uh yeah like this there we go so we have this on complete in here Let's make an event for this. Um, event. Level complete. <laughs> Trigger. Yeah. And for now, let's just add a, yeah, let's add another button. Um, go to next level. Okay, and let's see. So we've done minus 70 and this was what, minus 20? So minus what, 120? Okay, so this by default we're not gonna render, uh, so, or or maybe we can render it, but we're not gonna make it interactable. Gonna add an event listener. We're gonna listen to this event, and when this is triggered, we're gonna go to the button and make it interactable. And for now, it's not gonna, the button is not gonna do anything. Or it's gonna do because I just duplicated the button. Let's remove this. And let's actually let's make this uh, level definition shorter. Uh, let's remove uh, those two. Uh, level manager. Level invoke. Okay, so now this is done. Let's keep the cooldown. Now, after this wave is done and the, the cooldown passes, uh, we should uh, see this button. There we go. Now th this button is uh, now available, but... I think we're gonna want to have that button show up before the cool after after the the last wave is done, but before the cooldown. Um. Yeah, but that that's a small thing. I don't know how I how how I have to do it. I'll have to to add another uh another event to this uh, wave manager. Because right now we have one complete, and I might add in. On complete before cooldown or something, I don't know. 
so we can have that functionality but but for now it's okay no no let's add it because because uh, i'm gonna forget her complete before cooldown and let's see where where does the cooldown start it should start here i guess yeah invoke this and let's go back to the level manager and we're gonna listen to that as well and complete le uh, on complete uh, before cooldown yeah so let's see how how do we want to do this I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna copy this, just paste it in here. Without this else, need this. So if this is false and this is the last wave, so we're gonna do this because we're not gonna do the the increment in here. So we we just want to check if this is the last wave or the yeah next one. But uh, yeah, we're gonna set the flag to two, and then we're gonna invoke the uncomplete. And now we can remove it from here and go back to our yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty code that we had before. Add and enter here. Yeah. Yeah, this should work. Let's see it in action. Okay. Let's let it compile. On. Let's play. Level manager. Select level. Invoke. There's also one th one other thing that we'll have to do, but actually no, we're gonna deal with that in uh, when we click the button. Okay, this is the next wave, and after this one, we should get this button ready instantly. There we go. The cooldown started, and then we also have this button. Well, it doesn't do anything now. Yeah, so after you finish the last wave, I think you'll be able to press the button whenever you want. And it's gonna do two things. When we, it's uh, during the cooldown period, um, uh, it's gonna basically stop the cooldown and go to the next level immediately. Uh, but if it's... Um, If it's during a wave, and when if you press the button, wave, it's gonna like uh, kind of schedule it for after it's done. So you can you can still press it uh, during the during uh, during during a wave, but it's not gonna happen uh, immediately. It will wait for the for the end of the of the wave. Previously, we were thinking of uh, just disabling the button during the wave and only, sh only yeah, enable it uh, during the cooldown period. But I think it's better if you can press it while the game, while the wave is playing, and it's just gonna, yeah, it's gonna tell you that uh, the next level will be spawned uh, after this wave or something like that. But yeah, for now, for now this is good. For now this is good. we'll have. I don't know. I haven't thought about uh, where we're gonna store all the levels. 
it's gonna be some sort of, some sort of list of uh, of level definitions somewhere, but uh, yeah, I haven't done that uh, yet. And there's gonna be another manager that that's gonna deal with that. Maybe the game manager, but I don't think so. It's something between the game level, the, the game manager and the level manager probably. But we'll see. For now, for now we're just gonna trigger level manually, and we're gonna think about uh, the tower expansion uh, later. Because uh, yeah, there are a lot more things to do there before uh, that's gonna just uh, work out. I mean, I mean, we have the tower expansion, so that that thing we can do. So in the tower builder, we can expand the tower. Let's say I want to expand it by by five modules, but uh, it's kind of an undefined maybe what's gonna happen yeah so the enemies start from from there i guess i don't know if all the enemies will start from the new pieces or if some will start from the bottom not sure because i haven't done this part where we where you have two sections of the tower at the same time apparently they all start from here so maybe i've done something uh where it is yeah i don't know Apparently they start from there. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, the thing is, yeah, th there are other things to do to the first. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna stop the timer for this. Oh, damn, that was nice. I'm gonna just cut those two minutes from here because that's the time where I went when I was busy. So, yeah, we actually got. Uh... Yeah, we actually spent one hour on this task. And that's uh, exactly what I uh, what I estimated. Awesome. Let's commit this. And now we're gonna do some more UI stuff, actually. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I I, I want to show the the wave indicator, so we know uh, on on what wave uh, we're at. But now that I think about it, how do I want to do this? Because right now, so so I have to to link it to the level manager, I guess. Or should I link it to the? Whatever set up the level manager. Because right now we have the current wave, so so we have this index. We can use this, but this this is only correct for this level that we're that we're uh, that we have. Yeah, yeah, for the current level that we have. But if we're like on level uh, level two, we'll have to. On top of this, we'll have to add uh, the the count of all the the levels or the waves uh, from the previous levels, and this this component won't know anything about that. But it actually will. No, this is the place where we have to do it because. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna have a separate counter for this. Cause, cause actually, it's not correct what I said. Uh, so, so this wave is gonna keep increasing. Uh, past the the waves count from the level. Because we have this uh, this random wave that we're gonna spawn, uh, uh, yeah, indefinitely. So, yeah. I wonder if I no no I'm gonna keep track of that. So current wave. Um,
let's call it something like this or should we should we make that uh, should we make it directly a variable i don't think i did in code i only need it for the ui so yeah Actually, the name was good. Um, yeah, let's call it like this. Global wave. Uh, it doesn't have this. It's got a serialized field, and let's uh, actually let's let's put it here. It's okay. It's okay in here. Actually, no. Let's put it up there before the on complete. And actually, let's add a space in here. Okay, so we have the global wave. Um, let's see. On start, we're gonna uh, set the value to one. When this is increased, this will be increased as well. Ah shit! I haven't seen that. Um, this was not. Uh, oh, God damn it! I hate those errors. I hate those errors because they're so stupid. Um, yeah, the, the code compiles perfectly, so yeah, let's just publish this. And now it worked. That's stupid. Anyway, uh, getting back to this, so so we've made that change. Let's go to the level manager. So now we have this global wave, this variable here. So let's create that variable. ESF variables integer global wave. Set it here, and we have to go to that uh, special. Um, Component that came UI manager. So this is an int global wave. Let's import this. Uh, this is going to be an int. There we go, and now we all we have to do is define this in the table here. Add new entry, global wave. Oh no! I mean yes, yes, but no. Let's call this. Uh, this is not what I wanted to do actually. So global, yeah. Global dot global wave. Um, val. <laughs> I don't know what the name. What, what, I mean, this this is what what would what it would ah. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just do it like that. I don't, I don't really care. Um, variables. Let's set up this variable. It's gonna be integer. It's gonna have this name. One by default. Let's save this, and that should do it. Actually, no. We have to assign that uh, that variable. There we go. And we have to add it to the script. So let's duplicate this global wave, or just call it wave. Because in here it doesn't really matter. It only matters in that in that component. And let's choose wave. And this is this. That's okay. And one twenty. There we go. Let's save this and let's play. 
So where we are at wave one, uh, let's get the OBS back in here. Yeah, okay. So let's try it. Invoke. I started the first wave. Let's wait for it to end. Still at wave one. And after the cooldown is done, it should uh, go go to wave two. There we go. Awesome. Wave two. We got a button. We got a cooldown. And then we should get wave three. Bam. There we go. Four. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So this is done too. Um, five minutes. Wave indicator. One, throw an error. You stupid. There we go. Uh, let me see this. Just my messages. That's okay. Um. Yeah. So. We're gonna do something, um, uh, something we some tasks that we've made the uh, last stream, or for something that we've made last stream. Uh, let me pause this actually. Okay, um, wait, uh, what do we think? Yeah, yeah, so here. Yeah, so let's go to a wave definition. So let's choose this one. Yeah. So one thing that 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 is not correct in here. Um, so we have those multipliers that I said uh, are gonna be used to to make the whatever em enemy put here is gonna make him stronger. And one thing that I wanna do is make sure that you select the correct uh, statistic in here. So right now. Uh, this doesn't make any sense because uh, this is the health uh, stat, which, yeah, it's for the tower, it's not for the enemy. So we'll have to know uh, which statistics are available for each enemy type. So what I want to do on this uh, enemy definition, uh, so right now we have the name, the name of the enemy uh, and the prefab. And uh, I also would like to have uh, a list of Statistics that uh, that uh, yeah that the, the that the enemy has, and with that uh, in the if we go back to the wave uh, yeah uh, we're gonna do some checks in here to to make sure that the stat we put in here is actually available on the enemy. Otherwise, gonna throw an error or something. But first, we're gonna start with that list of stats on the on the enemy definition. Let's close everything. Let's do this. Let's go to the enemy. So we have runtime, enemy definition. Private link, and it's gonna be an array of stats. Serialized field, let's import this. This is this. So this, this link component is just a dummy. It's just a dummy scriptable object that I use to link, uh, yeah, to link things uh, between uh, between components in the game. And right now I'm using it, uh, for example, for stats. So so this stat is link. I have it here. I have it on the, let's see. Uh, so, so we have the tower health and actually here. Not there. 
So here's the health component and I have the stat for it. And what stat is, uh, is able to do for, for the tower? Uh, I mean, uh, if you go to the upgrades manager, I have a uh, an upgrade setup for this uh, for this stuff, and uh, yeah, this is how I yeah this is basically how I link things uh, or how I will link things in the game using this. Stuff. You you use that uh, that uh, this this link component to to get for example the upgrades for that for that uh, for that uh, stat. Otherwise, I would have to do. I don't know some magic strings or do uh, do this in code, and uh, I don't want to do neither of those. Okay. Yeah, so we have an array of uh, of stats. Um, let's see. Yeah. I wonder if he, uh, but I don't think, I don't think that's, uh, so, so, oh, yeah, let's actually just try it, uh, I, I, I want to see if, uh, if I, if the, if a hash set is, uh, if serializable, but I'm, I doubt it, hash set of link, because I don't want to, to have duplicate uh, duplicate entries in the in this array, um, so have to put some. Uh, I'd have to put some checks in here. Yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, I would have to do something. Uh, I don't know. Go to the enemy. Yeah, here's the array, but it doesn't know about this. Uh, but I might be able to do it a serialized reference, though. Let's see how that works. Would hash set? No, just a hash set. I could do it like this. Now the question is, if I add doesn't let me add the the same one. So that's what I wanted to do. But I'm not actually quite fond of this, uh, this attribute, so I would like to. I mean, it's it's good, it works great, but um, yeah, I don't want to use it that much because it comes with with some overhead. So I think yeah, I'm gonna the array. But what I'm gonna do is use Odin to um, some validation, I guess. Um, I know you can add some custom functionality for the add button. Uh, Determine now custom add function. This is what I want. Where are they? Where are they? Chef. Okay, I have to look at the documentation. I'm not in, I don't entirely get it, but I have to. Wait, what? Uh, this has to be an equal. Well, let's look at the documentation. Maybe there's there's more that we can find out in the code. Coding. Uh, I mean in the in the docs, not in the code. Let's see, let's search for this actually. Uh, not for this, but for this. Oh, there we go. Add custom function and... Wait, 
there's an int here, but I don't get it. Is at custom behavior count? What's this? This is the list. I don't get it. Oh, it's a list of ints. Okay, so I have to return. Okay. Wait, I know. I still don't get it. Where, where do I get the the value from? That's my question. This is not actually. Yeah, so let's go back. Um, custom add function. Yeah, it doesn't help me. This is the same thing that I see in code. Um. Okay, let's try this. I may have an idea what they're what they're talking about. So, uh, what, what do I want to say here? Yeah, let's make a private void. I guess um, this function. Uh, actually no, let's return link and return null. I think that uh, now if I press this button, um, no, no, no. Oh, okay. So this doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter because I, I don't use it anymore, and I don't plan to use it, but... Yeah, so I press... Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. So so, so what I wanted to do was... I press the, the add button, you get the... You get the... The, uh, the picker, where you can... This one, this thing. Where you can select whatever you want to add. And I wanted... After this, after you select this, I wanted to add a check uh, to see if it's already in the list, and if it is, just don't add it. But uh, if you want to use this uh, custom add function, you have to do this all by yourself to to open this. I don't know how to do it. I don't think it's it's that hard. I, I'll have to look into it. But yeah, I don't think I want to do it like this. Um, Let's just look at the documentation, maybe there's uh... Also, there's nothing else that would uh, help me with this Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna bother with this actually. I mean, if we have duplicates, uh, duplicate stats in here, it's, it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it's not gonna be good, but it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's add a space here, cause they're a bit uh, cluttered. And actually, I don't need the whole. I only want to. Um, to if it has this stat, so any. Um, Like this. Um, no, I want it to build. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't think I'm going to use this for anything else except for this, for using, uh, for using this. Because I don't need the list of stats, I, I just want to know if uh, a stat is available. And we don't have music, let's... Um, Let's something and what should we do? Um, yeah, let's do disturbed. Why not? I want to listen to disturbed in a while. Yeah, okay, but this is uh, yeah, this is what we want. Let's make a, for now a another stat. Uh, uh, it's a good question. What is the stat? Oh no, it's a link. Damn it. So dummy. And um, health stat. Stat. Let's just save this. Now let's finish this task. Yeah, let's just uh, commit this and then the other one. Maybe I should have put them in the, the same task because they're, they're um, totally related. But anyway. Okay, so now what we have to do is actually use this method in the wave definition. Yeah, here for the multipliers. Or actually here. Uh, oh, we can't actually use it here. We can't put the, the check in here because we don't have a reference to the, to the enemy. So we would have to do it here. I mean, I could add a reference to the to the way, but that would be or the to the nah, nah, that's that's too much too much work for just the uh, editor stuff. So yeah, let's just do it here. Really input name of whatever. Private void, uh, not private, private bool this. So the first thing that's gonna give me is this. Multipliers, then ref string. Uh, God damn it! Ref string or not string? Is it the error first or? I think the the type first. So ref in uh, God damn it! Info message type type. Let, let's make sure that that's the. So if we search this in our code, we should get. No, first is the message, then type. Yeah, okay. So now we have to do the checks. Um, can set the type to be be error because that's the only thing that we're gonna check for and then we're gonna have a list of link and now we're gonna make actually a of this yeah 
actually I don't even have to do that so multipliers um, for each of them multiplier so if um, multiplier dot stat or actually no enemy dot I made that private public if it doesn't have this actually this will be a filter and uh, it's not called a filter it's called where in C sharp not this and we can lambda so we want that and we want now we want to select because we want the link out of this or the or the stat hmm. so we want the stat or we want the name of this I think we need the name so let's just get the name uh, do we need an actually I don't think we need an array no we need an array yeah we need an array but now we're gonna do an if in here we're gonna have a message and then we're gonna return false Let's put the dollar sign there um some of the stat, stats the selected enemy let's add the name of the enemy here add this And then string that join. Um, we're gonna do a slash n. Actually, no. Slash t minus space. And the slash n should be in the front. No. How did I do it for? No. This would be here. And then I have to add a slash this base minus here. There we go. Let's see how it works. Actually, this could be a just get it out of here put it here this could be a private const string um, a separator let's see if it works dummy enemy inspector uh, no, not here. Uh, on the wave. Wave definition. There we go. Uh, let's remove that first uh, break. And I think we need more spaces in here. Not here, but here. I think there were like five spaces that we had to add. Um. I don't know what, so, so let's look at the, the other thing that we've done. Uh, we can search by string join, because I think there's only one other place where we've used it. 
at this one. And I want to do the same thing. So this. Yeah, there were five spaces. Yeah. Some of the cells don't belong to the selected enemy. Dummy enemy definition. And this. And now if we change this to the dummy enemy health. Error disappears because this stat is available on the enemy. Let's add some spacing in here. Kind of, they're kind of close to each other, and before the count also. Yeah, that's better. Nice. Cool. So added this validation as well. That's that's a this is a good one. It's this because that's that's actually it. Feature. Yes, it worked this time. Okay, so the next uh, the next uh, the next test that uh, we're gonna do is still related to the wave definition. I wanna add a check to this enemies uh, list, and um, yeah, show an error when we use uh, the same enemy twice. So if you, if you use the same enemy, you should get an error, even though you wanna put uh, different multipliers if you have. I mean, it doesn't make sense to use the same enemy, but uh, have them be, or have them uh, have, uh, yeah, different, uh, different stats. Because using the same enemy, yeah, the, the user won't uh, want the difference between them, so it will, it would be weird to have uh, some that are uh, uh, very powerful and that some that uh, don't have a lot of health. For example, that's that is an extreme case, but uh, yeah, you should different enemies even though they're the same like they have the same behavior uh, you should make different ones and look different or something because and uh, yeah so so you understand that uh, they are different in some way so yeah, i'm gonna add a check to this list and uh, let's do the or uh, yeah throw an error if you have the same uh, enemy twice Let's try this. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing that we've done for um what was it? For um for the waves? No, not the waves. Um, wait, what have we done that? So there's that I've done uh, last week, but I don't remember where I've done it. Oh, in the level definition, I see. Okay, so yeah, we have a similar uh, check in level definition. Well, you cannot be null. I don't, uh, I don't know where this. What? 
the multiplayer. What? Ah, the enemy throw throw an error because I didn't I didn't have an enemy. That makes sense. Let's put a check for that. So here, if we don't know the enemy, the enemy is now we're gonna return through. But it's gonna break here because we don't have that enemy. Well, actually, it's gonna break here first. Okay. Anyway, getting back to this. So, so in the in the level definition, you you can't add the same width twice. It's gonna give you an error and also uh, signal you in here. So that uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a similar thing to the to the enemies. In the in the waves. So we're gonna I guess be a lot of code that we we have there. So let's put the level definition. Uh, side by side with the wave definition so what do we have here so we have this validate waves function which does a lot of things but we only want the duplicate uh, duplicate one and yeah actually this is one that uh, the one that yeah the uh, Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So let, let's first start with this uh, with this method. Uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna just copy this. Maybe. No, I'm gonna write it again. That would be that would be better. Um, so we have to do it in here. Let's make validators and let's also make uh, one here. A region. Validators and let's copy this into the region and let's close it. Uh, we're gonna validate the input here. Name of um, validate enemies. So let's see what do we have. So private bool of this. We're gonna get a list of these things, and let's just copy this from here. So we're gonna get the message and the type. Let's return true by default. Let's make the type be an error, and let's do the check for uh, for uh, duplicates. Actually, I think we we're gonna do the others as well. Yeah, let's do the other the other uh, errors too. So if uh, enemies that length is zero. Let's actually copy this without the type. Let's see how we've done duplicates in here. Uh, we have this magic count function. Oh yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, get this count function. Um, in a separate file because I need it here as well. Let's see, we're gonna put it in utils, but I don't know uh, what I should name the the, the file. Uh, um. Static like this. Let's import everything. Let's import system in here and let's remove it from here. Okay. Uh, 
Um, why doesn't he like this? Because it's private, makes sense. Just to be public. Okay. We're gonna have a similar thing here where we have enemies and this. Let's do this. Uh, this is not the wave, this is an enemy. Enemy index, this is enemies. Other and other index. Patev, wave, enemy. We don't have an enemy name, that doesn't make sense. Oh yes, no, it does make sense because it is not actually uh, the enemy. So here, this other dot enemy, this enemy dot enemy, like this. Let's copy this. The following enemy appear multiple times in the list. Let's remove this. And uh, static public public uh, const string. List separator and do I still have it here? Yes, I do. Yeah, much better. Let's also replace the one that we have in here. So let's remove this. And let's use the list separator and also replace the one in here or more like add it because it because we don't have it like this. Awesome. The following enemy appear multiple times in the list. That's it. Now if we go back, yeah that's what we see. We see the we see the error. Now if we remove this, the error goes away. Enemy required, add the enemy and then bam, it appears multiple times. So now, that's, this is good, this is what we want. But we want to do actually something, uh, I mean something more. So so I like what, I, what, uh, what I've done with the levels where uh, you have also this indicator in front of the yeah, in front of the thing. So you you have the, the error message up top, but you also see exactly uh, where the error is. So, so I'm going to do the same for the waves. So let's do that. I think I'm going to copy this method. And I wonder if I can somehow generalize it. I mean, I can generalize it, right? Yeah, let's try to generalize this method. Um, let's add it here. Um, list error indicator, I guess. Index. Uh, so we'll need the index and we'll need a list of. No, we need. We don't need a list of anything. Um, 
we don't need this. We will need a tulip, and we will need. Uh, so I don't need index. Uh, we will need a bool um, show label, which is going to be here. Show label. We're going to remove the tooltip like this. Uh, this is not going to be private. It's going to be public, and it's going to be static. Now let's import everything this to work. Awesome. Yeah, and actually that's it. Let's try to use it here. So instead of doing uh, those things, let's do list error indicator uh, label. Uh, it would be this. And the tooltip, it would be, I mean, just just use the tooltip. Then we're not going to have this, and we're not going to have the label. So let's see if this still works. Level, level definition, yep, still works. So now we can use the same thing uh, on the... On the wave definition for the enemies, but first let's see how, how have we done this. So yeah, enemies validate input, and we also want this, and we also need that, and because uh, we start a horizontal here, and we need to end it. Um, list error indicator start Then we need an end as well Which is gonna be this A void I can do void um, this start yep there we go actually let's copy all of this Paste it in here. Uh, enemies. Those are the duplicates. So we don't have a null value. We only have duplicates. So let's keep on it duplicates. Yeah, that should be it. See how it. Oh my god, it looks like shit. Because I've added that. This is bad. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because of this, um, this horizontal thing. Let's try it without it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it, so it works. It works, but it doesn't work actually. Why doesn't it work? Because I have to add that enemy. Enemy. Yeah. So good. That doesn't look good. Actually, I know how to fix it, I think. 
So we have a beginning frontal here, but I could just after this uh, begin a vertical and end it in here. If I fix it, please. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, this is awesome. And this should still work for the levels. And yes, it does. Awesome! Okay, so we have the... We have the error on top that we have the, the, use the same enemy. And we have this error in front of the actual enemy. This worked out great. That's awesome! Nice! So I guess the, the, uh, this task is done. But let's first try that. Okay, so I can remove it. That's fine. Yeah. And let's just remove it. Okay, so specify list one. Can I undo this? I can. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so this is uh, this is done as well. So this check is. This check is good. Let's um, let's commit uh, this change as well. Also, sure. Okay. Now the next uh, task is gonna be a, a little bit more more interesting than the than the previous ones. So. This doesn't say much, but so let's get this uh, this thing in here. So, why not something for the weapons? Uh, this is the only thing that we're, that we're going to do for the weapons uh, this stream, but uh, I saw that we had it here, so we might as well start working on it. Because it's, it is ready. So, for our weapons, or, or more like, no, not, not only the weapons, but... Uh, uh, actually, no. For for the weapons, for the, anim for the enemies, we're gonna have another uh, other types of colliders. Yeah. So for the weapons or for the area in which the the, the weapons are gonna target the enemies, uh, we're gonna use um, we're gonna use uh, 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 um, capsule colliders. So let's 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 try it. Uh, Let's try it in here, or no? Let's let's try it in the module because that would uh, that look better. Uh, so this, and let's hijack one of those uh, visual components. So let's put a capsule in here. Let's rotate it. Um, Go to local, so that's X. Let's rotate it by 90 degrees. There we go. Let's remove the mesh renderer because we don't need the renderer. And let's make this bigger. Let's put it like um, four meters height. Uh, it's gonna be I don't know 10 meters. That's actually small. Let's put it at 20 meters. Yeah, that's more like it. So now I can... Yeah. Actually, let's... Uh, uh, what's that? That's the Y. No. That is the Z. Okay. At uh, 10 minus... Let's put it at 6. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're gonna do for the weapons? Oh my god, this looks so. Never mind. Um, what we're gonna do for the weapons? We're gonna have uh, cylinders uh, for for the, for the detection area. Um, and what I would like to to have is so so. 
having this extended doesn't help me at all because I don't care if this might be uh, way longer or shorter than than it is right now. I only care about this uh, this circle here that is uh, next to the tower. So what do I want, what do I want to do is make a component that renders uh, this circle so I know exactly the, the area that's gonna be affected uh, by the by the weapon. So basically we're gonna have a, a component that uh, takes in a capsule collider and it uh, um, yeah it, uh, there's a gizmo on the screen but it's not gonna be uh, just a, just a circle I'm gonna do it a bit different because um, let's look from the top right now as you can see uh, can I zoom in a little bit more yeah so right now so this would be the circle that I that I showed uh, previously so so the circle is not um, yeah it, it, it's it's true and I want it to be curved around the tower basically that's what I like to, uh, that's uh, what I want it to look uh, look like so I know yeah so I have a more accurate presentation of uh, what the what the what's the the area that's gonna be affected so yeah that's what uh, that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna try to draw this circle but project it on the curvature of the tower that's uh, that would be the idea. So that that should uh, come out uh, really easy, I guess. Um. So yeah, let's uh, let's try to. So this this component is only for uh for for the editor only to to easily see the the area of the. Yeah, of this. Uh, yeah, the area in which the 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 weapon is gonna is gonna detect. Uh, so start uh, the timer for this. As this card changes, let's see what we can do. So uh, this is gonna be uh, for the weapons. So I'm. Gonna uh, actually, I'm not sure it's gonna be only for the weapons. Yeah, for now, for now, it's only gonna be for the weapons. Let's make a weapons folder. Uh, let's make a runtime folder, and we'll have to do. What did I call that thing? Collider visualization component. We're gonna. Call it something like this. A collider visualizer. Collider visualizer. Yeah, sure. I don't know why the, why the editor chose this name, but that's not correct. So we want to go to ESS. Weapons runtime. Runtime. This is gonna be a mono behavior, but yeah, let's uh, so let's copy that. We have to add the assembly reference, so our uh, our script uh, lives in the game assembly. This is for runtime. Apply. Let's wait for it to compile. There we go. So now it's in the project tower runtime uh, assembly. Okay, so let's do this. So let's make a private collider, uh, not collider, uh, capsule collider. Collider. Let's make this a serialized field, and we need what do we need? Um, what do we need? Uh, 
Yeah, we're going to draw the... Yeah, we're going to draw Gizmo. Yeah, we're going to do it uh, all the time. Uh, actually, one last thing that we're gonna need: global tower data, because we want to know uh, the towers. Um, yeah, we need it for the tower curvature. We need this uh, this radius. Okay, but first let's start by creating a simple circle and then we're gonna deal with the yeah uh, projecting it onto the to the tower. So in the gizmos I think we have you no know, so we have a draw sphere or whatever wire sphere but that's not what we, what we're gonna use we're gonna draw our so, so we don't, we actually don't have a, 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 a yeah, method for drawing a, a circle. Uh, but even if we did, we couldn't have used it because, uh, yeah, we want this custom behavior. So we'll have to draw our circle by hand by using lines. So let's see. Um, Let's see, how do we do this? So, let's see, I want to drop, I don't know, how many lines should we draw? Um, I don't know, 20 lines, maybe? Let's do... Uh, pi divide... Uh, Pi times 2 divided by the steps. And let's do a for loop from 0 to steps. But also equal to steps. Well, actually, no, not equal. And var from is going to be step multiplied by i. And this is from and to angle is i plus 1 and I have to transform this angle into a position but we actually need more things actually no no we actually we have everything that we need um let me back up here hello Mohan how are you Okay, so let's see. So, so we have the uh, the angles. Uh, we'll need the radius. So it's gonna be collider dot something radius here. Draw a line. Okay, so now we can draw the line. Yeah, but actually, let's do it like this. So from vector three. So x is cos of from angle multiplied by the radius zero and uh, actually not zero because we want it on wait 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 I don't know where to put it actually. Ah, shit. Ah, god damn it. Um... Okay, so... Let's say this is the tower. Let's get the line and want to draw the let's say that this is a circle. So in 
the case um, for getting the points on the circle, we would use, so um, let me get the brush. So direction would be the X. This direction would be the, the, uh, the head and whatever. The one that we're looking at in this is uh, is the Y. So in this in this circle, we to get the the, the positions. Uh, actually, this would be the Z. Uh, I can't write. So this would be the Z, and this would be the Y. But if, for example, we do the here yeah we have to change the coordinates because uh, for this example the so what's this it would be the reverse because in this direction it would be X and Y would be here so at least at least I know I always have to use the Y component, but I don't know. We have to do something about the Z component. Actually, no, it, it's hard. So, so the cost, uh, the, the the cost in here would be either uh, X or Z, and the Y would always be the the sin. So yeah, so ma math f dot uh, sin of Rome angle times radius. Yeah, so let's try it like this for now, and let's do the same for the for the two position. So this is two angle and two angle, and here when we draw the line, it's from and to. Yeah, and also I want to do, let's do, I don't know, blue, yeah. So now let's try it. We're going to try it on, a, on another piece of, actually let's go to the same, uh, to the same module. Um, where do we have our modules? Let's close the scripts because we don't need this. Here are the modules, they go to the straight module. And let's make actually yeah sure let's use this so let's make this um, let's call it collider um, let's add a capsule collider and collider visualizer so let's add the capsule and let's add the tower data yeah so we all have to draw this in the correct position. So right now, with the coordinates in here are in local space. We have to transform those in uh, in world space. But um, yeah, let's just set up this. So um, let's say a radius of four meters. It has a height of six, seven, ten meters. Um, and this is a oh that's Z I guess that's the forward so this would be our component and yeah our, our thing is drawn not in the correct place but the idea is that if we rotate this yeah this is not gonna rotate with with uh, with the position of the Yeah. So let's see what we can do about that. Because actually, I don't know if I can. I would have to know the position of or the rotation of this. Or yeah, I'll have to know this, basically. Have to know this. Huh. Okay, let's uh, let's start by um, 
But no, no, I, I actually need... No, okay, no, I, I know what to do. Okay, so we have this. Uh, draw line. I have to add the... The root position. So the... This, uh, so from... And two, we add the root position. There we go. And it should be drawn from this point. There we go. So we have the circle. And if we actually don't like this, so uh, let, let me. Yeah, that's better. So we have the circle. Now, if we change the angle, this will always be drawn like this on the like horizontally let's say so the first thing that we have to do is somehow rotate it so we'll have to to some get the angle and rotate uh, rotate this accordingly or always face uh, I mean yeah that's the same thing but always face the the, the Z axis so let's see Um, let's get the rotation. How do we do this? Uh, vector three dot angle between vector three dot right and the transform that forward. So let's get the at uh, this angle uh, let's catch the transform yr yep and we have this rotation from cos equals this So we have the angle, and now we have to transform this somehow. Um, I don't know what 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 function should I use. So so what's the function that gives me zero when the angle is zero? That that's sin. Okay. Rot sin. Sure. Why not? I'm not sure if this angle gives me radians or degrees. In degrees. Okay. So let's multiply this by degrees to radians I can use this here to cos time rot sin so I think that if I do this this circle should be a tangent to, to the tower I got it. Kind of works. I think I'm gonna have to um, uh, invert some 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 angles, but uh, let's let's make this more vibrant. So this blue it uh, doesn't look good on top of the the background. So let's make it uh, magenta. That's that's what we're gonna see. Yeah, much better.
Okay, so we have this, which is okay. Oh my god. Okay, so one thing that I don't like is I'm not going to use gizmos for this. I'm going to use handles. Draw line. It, uh, let's make the thickness. Uh, the test. That's what I want. So I want to put this on always. I, I I want to draw this on top of the thing, so it's easier to see. Go. And let's make the this collider. Uh, Actual collider. Um, let's make the radius big. So let's put it like uh, ten, maybe. Yeah, sure. And let's close this so we don't render the small. Holy sh shit! Because it, it doesn't work as I expected it. It has a 45 degrees angle and it always keeps this 45 degrees angle, apparently. Okay, so it doesn't work as I expected it to work. So then let's get back to the power painting in here. Ah, this is the part. I, I think I could use um, some matrices to matrices to, to to solve this, but I don't know how they work. I don't not not exactly. Actually, I have an I have an idea, uh, but let's see. Uh, uh, matrix um, local to world matrix. Let's use this. Let's try this. So we don't need to add the position in here. Let's make this uh, zero. And let's see what happens. This might not work, but this might work. Let's see what happens. We have a line that's that's not. Oh, of course. Oh wait. Okay, uh, zero is not a good. Uh. Because scene goes from minus one to one, and I only want it from zero to one. That's why it doesn't work correctly. Okay, I uh, just want to test this real quick. So this back in here and I wonder if I add one and then so by adding one, I, I'm gonna bring it to the zero uh, from zero to, to two and I'm gonna divide by two so now so now it's from zero to one so I wonder if now the circle is gonna look correctly and yeah no no it actually looks good 
I, I, I removed the... Uh... Nope, never mind. It looked because it was uh, like a rectangle. Yeah, never mind. I don't know why it does. Uh, why it, uh, why it, uh, why it does that? Okay, so now let's get back to, to this matrix. Um, let's remove this. Something is not correct. I've multiplied by the same thing. I'm stupid. Of course, it gives me a forty-five angle. Jesus. Let's do the cosinus as well. Uh, so. And I don't think I need this. And now the question is which one does need the, the, the cosinus? Uh, I think this needs a minus though. And I think the cos is in here. Let's try it again. Because in, in my head, this should work. So, I mean, the idea is good, but I'm not sure. Uh... Yay! We're getting somewhere. I don't know why, why it does that loop there. And it's stuck in here. But that's something. Let's remove this minus from here. I don't think it's gonna do anything. Maybe just uh, twist in another way or in some other place. Yep. It just twists there instead of down here. Um, okay, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but as I said, let's just uh, keep doing this. So, so um. Let's make this one, let's make this zero. Let's oh I've I've added the matrix in here. That's I think that's why it wasn't. God damn it, I wanna try it again now. So let's comment this. And let's look at it again. I think there were um interfering. Okay, this doesn't look from the start it doesn't look good. But this is something. Okay, doesn't make any sense. So let's try with this again. Yeah, so cosinus is gonna be one. The sin is gonna be zero. So this just cancels whatever cal uh, calculations I've done here. So let's see it in, in action. So this looks promising. Yep. Yeah, this just this just works. It just it just works. I don't have to do anything. I definitely have to learn more about this because this is getting uh, ridiculous. I mean, I have to learn more about how to use those uh, matrices. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so this works. I can remove my code uh, from here. Even though, yeah, I think I think this would have worked. Um, I don't know why it doesn't, but it doesn't really matter because it simplified my code. Uh, actually, this can be zero. There we go, and we can actually uh, get rid of those variables.
because we no longer need them. And now the only thing that we have to do is uh, make sure we're um, flush with the tower. I might just uh, no, I think I think twenty twenty steps is okay actually. This is like a big area, so we might not have areas this big. Um, but yeah, getting back to this, so yeah, we'll have to do something with with this uh, Z value. Uh, but I'm not sure, uh, not yet sure what. So basically, actually, yeah, what I want now is have a perpendicular line from whatever point on the tower and get the intersection with the I wanted that to be purple. And I want this uh, this intersection point, which I'm gonna do with blue. So I want this point. And I'm not sure how to do that. Not, I have no idea how to do that. How to get this intersection. Ah, horrible. Um, how do I do this? How can we do this? Let's um, let's make another try. Don't save. So we have the circle. We have the whatever. Let me get the line. We have our line which I'm gonna move to touch the there we go and then we'll have this perpendicular on the tower so I know the position of this point I know where the center of the tower is Let's see. Let's see what other what other things do I know. So let's draw some helper lines. I know the distance here. Maybe I need it. So if uh, okay, so I know that, which means that I know this angle. Hmm. Ah. Also, this angle is the same as this angle. Because those are parallel lines. So I know that. What other things do I know? So I know the height. If I, do I need this height? I don't know if I need this height. But anyway, I, need, I, I know this height as well. So it's this. I don't know what other things. I know that would help with this. And I, I don't 
know how to search for this because this is such a particular case. It's not like the distance to a circle. It's like, okay, you have a tangent and then you have a per perpendicular to the tangent and what's the, the distance to the circle then? So yeah. Oh. Not sure. Not sure. Something about this the curvature the formula for this would help maybe Ah Uh, see, I'm not sure how to do this. I feel there's there's definitely something that I that I, I don't know, like uh, a formula or something that would help. not directly solve this, but would uh, yeah give me something that I can work with. But I'm not sure if I have enough information about this particular thing the, to, to, to actually determine this this length The idea is that if it would be a let's make this now if this would be a straight line I wouldn't uh no I want that to be like this thank you I wouldn't know this distance So if this was a straight line, but that's, that's yeah, it's not what's what this is. But I, I I would easily know this distance because yeah, it would be I would divide the the radius by what's the distance from this point to this. Then uh, this distance is uh, the radius times that actually. But for a circle, so this is circular. I mean, would probably approximate this. Let's try. So, so, so yeah, I don't need perfect result but if i can get an approximation that would be good too so um, uh, 
How do you make a circle? What's the form of the circle? This is not it. Um, that called equation. Okay, so x squared plus y squared equals the radius x squared plus uh, y squared equals 5 okay so it knows this where x more than 0 and y more than 0 no y more than 0 so this would be my my arc that I would work with. So this, yeah, this this would be this. Ah. <sighs> I don't know how to do this. I don't know. Uh, actually, I want. Put a one in there because it's easier to work with uh, the circle of radius one. I mean, I said radius one, but this is. I mean, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, a radius of one. Yeah, no, that's correct. No, it's not correct. It needs a diameter of one, so the radius it has to be of that, which is not. Because this is the radius squared. So if I want a circle that has a diameter of one, what should uh, five? Yeah. Okay, that's better. Oh my God, I'm stupid. Right, wait, wait. Okay, okay. I have something. Uh, let's undo some things here. Okay, so let's take this line. So for this, uh, uh, let's make it, uh, let's make it, yeah, let's make it orange. Uh, let's make it thicker. So for this line, is Uh, this angle this is the cos but I don't know I don't know the angle so if I had the angle I would know instantly what, what this portion is because basically it's the radius minus this cos portion but I don't know that. But I do know something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I do know something. So um, if we extend this, 
uh, let's keep it blue. I know this is the scene. And I know the scene because it's this. So I know the scene. So having the scene, I can get the course. And I'm not sure exactly what the formula is. So it's square root of 1 minus cos of this or cos squared. What's what's the what's the formula? I mean I I can deduce it. But so I think I think it's sin squared of x plus cos squared of x equals one. I think that's that's the plus. Yeah, plus. So from this, we can deduce that cos is actually cos of x is actually square root of one minus sin. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's let's try this in code. So for each point from um, var, let's call var. Uh, come on, var from z equals. So we'll have to do this for each one of them. So this is this would be this cosinus. So we'll have to subtract from the radius. We'll have to subtract this to get this this thing. So let's get the radius. So this is the radius. Radius minus the square root of 1 minus math f dot. Wait, but uh, what I said, uh, did I know the sin? Because the sin is this. Uh, what's the sin? Uh, the sin is. This. This. One minus from cos times from cos, because this has to be a square, right? Because this is a square here. So if I put a minus this in here, and let's try uh, let's put from cos back in here, and let's do the same for the two. So two cos and two z. Two radius minus one. Two cos two cos. 2z is here, so minus this, and this should be here. Let's look at it. If this curves around the tower, I'm gonna be so happy. Um. Ah. Almost. Almost good. Not exactly what I thought it would be. Okay, this doesn't look good at all. Let's just make one of them uh, zero for now. We're gonna have some some zigzagging here, but uh... yeah. How about if we look from the top? There is a curvature in here, so it's this.
Right, let's get the back paint. Oh, but this is not correct. Uh, let's draw the circle. So this this line would be our circle. If we have, let's say that we have the line, I don't know, let's make it another color, let's make it green and use the line. So let's say we're drawing this point. This is the distance that we want. So this distance from the center to the point is actually this. So this is no longer the cosinus of this. Be like, like what's this? I don't know what's this. I mean, I know, no, I I know what this is. This is the distance to. I don't know, the green. And be black. Yeah, this is the distance from the perpendicular, which is I don't I don't know what the. What the, what the formula for this is, but the, that's that's what this is. So it's not actually cosinus. So we're not going to use that. It's cosinus only um, at the center here. God damn it. So only here. That's the uh, the correct value. But for any other point, uh, it's not. And also, cosinus is going to give us negative numbers in this direction. So we actually would. Actually no, no, it's okay because uh, we have uh, uh, we are uh, raising the yeah we're squaring it so the the minus is gonna disappear. So actually we need the distance. So we we need this point. We need the distance to this this line somehow. Uh, actually no. I know what that distance is. Because I know the angle. Right. Wait, but that is. Wait, 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 wait. wait. But that is the cosinus. I don't get it. So for this point, it is the cosinus. Wait, the cosinus of what angle? This is correct. No, wait. Ah, uh, no, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I, I uh, not sure why this is not working. Yeah, I'll take a short break and uh, think about it. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Okay, I'm back. I still have no idea why it doesn't work. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I, I do wanna, um, wanna do one thing here. So let's get this back. Um, oh shit. Three dot uh, right. No, four. Yeah. Uh, times uh, Z. Actually, back from offset to offset. So I want to draw, uh, uh, basically I want to draw two circles. From plus, from offset, math. Let's do a minus then here. And two minus, two offset. Yeah, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw both circles. Both the 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 straight one and curved one. Hmm. What happens here? We we'll go around the circle. Let's look at the math again. Oh, this might not be. Did the radius minus that? Wait, the radius minus yeah, the radius, which is this minus the cosinus. So that part is good. We deduced the cosinus in here from the sinus, which we said is this, and this is actually this. So it's equal to this, and this is the cosinus of this angle which we have we have the cosinus Trying to imagine why it goes so far. First of all, why it goes so far back? And why is it cur so so? It is curving a bit, like this. But it also does this weird. Uh, angle thing and I don't know why it does this so this is this is the weird part from the top 
yeah, there is some curvature. It's not enough. So it's not, it should be like what, what, what the ends are right now. It should curve around the tower or almost try to imitate the tower. But right now, yeah, it's just, just a tiny bit of uh, curvature, but I don't know what happens in those, in those points here. What are those points? Those points are where the cosinus or this, or, or actually yeah, where the angle is zero. Or um, 180. So this is gonna be zero. So it's gonna be the whole radius. Wait, it does make sense. Something's not right. Wait. Let me visualize this. Um, uh, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I think I understand. Not in the same plane. They are not in the same plane. It's not happening on the horizontal plane. The plane changes for this point. So I actually wonder the radius of... Wait, I wonder the radius of the circle, but what's the difference then? It's not going to differ. Uh, uh, this is so confusing. Oh, but if it's not in the same plane, it doesn't work with this. Wait a second. This only works in the horizontal plane. Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't even know how to explain this. I actually let me explain it, but I don't know how to fix it. Oh, this sound is so simple. This sound is so simple. Can I even simplify this? Because right now what I'm thinking, it just throws me... I, I can't do to the math, I have to go into 3D somehow. But I, I wonder if there's a simpler way of doing this. that I don't know of. Um.
Not sure. I'm not sure how to do this. Uh, I'm not sure. I just wanna try something, so instead of using this rig, am I that stupid? I've used this radius. This is not the radius that I want. This is not the, the correct radius. I want the tower radius. God damn it. I want this radius. Oh, oh my god. If this works with this radius, that would be something. But I doubt it. Uh, yeah, it looks the same. It looks the same. But now it's more correct. But no, it looks. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look good. My God. I need this radius here, and I don't need only the the cosinus. I need the whole. <sighs> Let's look at it again. Well, it disappeared. Two possibilities, it's drawn in the same place with the other one or it's somewhere else entirely and I don't see it. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Right, let's make it five in diameter. Uh, let's uh, give this offset. Oh no, okay, so it's drawn somewhere. Yeah, we don't know where it is. Okay, so, so something is definitely not working here. Is not actually seen? Yeah. So 
have this uh, we have this I think I have to divide this by this radius let's let's uh, rename this from a Z from from X bar let's just call it cost for now so it's gonna be from x divided by this radius. Um, let's actually var our radius. And let's rename this as lighter radius. Try this. We have some zigzags in here, but uh, yeah, only two small lines. That's not very. Okay, so let's see. So I want this length, but I don't actually want that length. I want it to be to be the result of a of scene of this angle. So it has to be from minus one to one. So actually not multiplying it by. The collider radius here actually was okay. Or was it? Oh, it does make sense. Let's keep this like this. Let's say this is from cos. This doesn't matter anymore, and this should be uh, actually. Uh, there's no more multiplication. It's one minus this. Let's try it again. Well, we have more lines, but not all of them. Hello. Now this is more like it. It's not yet perf perfect, but uh, but hey, that's something. It's not. I don't think it's perfect because we use this radius in here. I don't think that's what we should use. But hey, this is awesome. 
No, the radius should be fine. I don't know why it goes so far in that direction, but... Uh... It's too extreme. It is too extreme right now. And we haven't taken the, the tow radius into consideration, so so yeah. The tow radius should appear somewhere, because without it... Um, yeah, I don't know how or where, but, but it, that should appear somewhere, for sure. It has to play a role in this. man this this looks nice this looks actually nice uh, So something about this this distance transformed into this scene is, uh, yeah something about that is not correct I guess of course it's not correct because this cost goes from zero to one from this point to this point and it shouldn't be one for for, for this large circle this shouldn't be one it should be one somewhere around here yeah that's why it's freaking out. Okay, so yeah, this is where the radius comes in. So here, uh, this cosinus is not actually correct. We have to transform it somehow. So how do how do we transform it? So let's see. Um, First of all, let's do something here. Um, actually, no. Uh, do I not have... Um, wait, let's just check something real quick. Do I no longer have a mathematics library? So I might use that instead of the standard one. In project. Okay, we no longer have... Uh, have that but I can import it so it's com dot unity dot mathematics so let's get that awesome oh yeah I have to include that in the close this uh, script assembly definitions here in the runtime. We have to add the mathematics thingy. Save. Now it should be available. Reference assembly mathematics and import. Yeah, I want to import it. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay, so yeah. Okay, why? Oh, I haven't applied this. That's why. I forgot. I I I've added it, but forgot to apply it. Yeah. So now it knows about it. On the pow uh, and I want this to the second power, but this multiplied by the collider radius divided by the tower radius. Yeah. Let's transform everything in here as well. So 
uh, uh, does this work with uh, degrees or radians? I assume radians, but just, I want to be sure. Returns the cosine of. I mean, I know it's a float value, but uh, also this uses the, the standard method. I don't know what this is, but I assume it's a. Uh, it's uh, it's still radian. Yay! Yeah, that's it. So now we should see the correct curvature. Oh my god. Look at this. Holy shit, it works. Uh, we don't have music. Let's put some music to celebrate. But I don't know what what should we listen to? Um Stone Sour, sure. Oh my god, this looks amazing. It actually worked. It actually worked. So I'd like it to be a, a little bit uh, more. I add multiple of those, but oh my god! Damn, this looks nice. Hell yeah! Awesome! We've made it! And it only took like what? One and a half hours! And I said, yeah, sure, I'm gonna finish this in 30 minutes. That's what I I, was, I said on, a, on the task, that's what I estimated. But man, it was worth it, this looks amazing. It's fun to figure out how to do this. <laughs> okay, but coming back to this... Yeah, so I think I wanna do some more... Okay, so... So for sure, I want to offset this um, and draw more uh, more lines. Okay, so let's see. Um, from N2 and var from extended, which is gonna be... Actually, no, let's first start by including the offset back into the, back into this. So this is from Z and this is 2Z and with the minus, we don't need the offsets anymore. We're just going to remove them. Let's save this and see if this still works. It still does, amazing. And now from, uh, oh no, let's call this offset. Um, so I wanna do an offset. So vector, vector three dot forward. Um, yeah, multiplied by three var um, from, from extended, which is going to be from plus the off, uh, offset, and do the same for the two. From extended to extended. So basically, we're have we're going to have another circle in here. Uh, actually, should we have it like this, or should we? I might have it. Uh... Hmm. Instead of having it with an offset, I might just have it at a certain z value. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, and I don't have my. Oh. oh. Okay, I'm gonna make those methods that I that I need in here. So, um, vec three. Let's 
static um, public static uh, bug vector three that z um actually so okay so this is a struct Yeah, so value dot z equals whatever. Float z return value. Let's see. There we go. And one other thing that I want to do is draw some more lines. And let's start draw a line from from extended. Actually, let's do a thickness of one here. And let's, let's do it for no, no, just just one, just for from. And let's make the offset uh, bigger. Let's put like five meters out there we go so this will be the area in which the enemy or the yeah in which the the weapon will uh, will start shooting the enemy this looks awesome nice i like it And I think I'm going to make the number of steps uh, dependent on the collider radius. So steps would be, I don't know, something like collide. Uh, oh. Int. Yeah. Collide. Uh. Yeah. Five times collider radius. Something like that. So the the bigger you make the collider radius, the more um lines you're gonna have. Have I done something stupid? So the radius is two. So this is gonna five but uh I think unit is dying I don't know something stupid oh he's back no he's totally struggling or not okay why is he stuck And uh, I pause it. I can. Okay.
Oh yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> what? Okay, so this doesn't do what I what I thought it would do. Okay. Um shit. Um Okay, so let's look, look at the, this. Uh... So, so what I wanted to do is just transform this into an. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna help. There are there are a million of func million functions in here. Oh yeah, as double as float int. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. It's weird that it doesn't have a floor with an uh, with an with an int uh, as a return type. So yeah, I don't know what you would do to get an int back. Uh, but let's search the internet. Mass yeah, this is what the, this is from the. Okay, so that's what, that's what you have to do. Just cast it as int. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop it again. This is gonna, totally gonna break. So. Um, let's see. I equals steps. Yep. I'm still trying to draw. God damn it, stupid. Not, not this. Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay, never mind. Um, put a breakpoint there. Um, continue. Yeah. There we go. Managed to fix it. Here it is. I mean, there are not a lot of uh, lines, but I guess that works. But the uh, but the idea is that you, if you increase the damn, this looks nice. Uh, I'll have to to cap this.
I'm actually gonna gonna do that now. So I guess this. This is the value, and I want to clamp it from zero from zero to one. Uh, F. Okay. So now it should just be a straight line. Maybe. Yeah. Damn, it looks nice. Yep, this this is this is nice. Let's change the color, I guess. Um maybe the cyan. And I think I'm gonna uh, change the Z test to. I don't know if it, I think greater is what I want. Nope, less is what I want. Or less equal. Yeah, that's better. Nice. Very nice. Actually, I think I'm going to expose that color in the editor. Private color. Color. I'm gonna make it cyan by default because maybe we'll, maybe we'll we'll want to have different colors for different types of weapons, so we can distinguish them easily. Maybe, but yeah. One thing that I can do, can I do no, but I can copy component and paste it here. Remove it from here. This is gonna freak out. Yeah. So instead of having the the, the capsule collider on the same element with this. Oh, but it's it's still drying. Ah, oh, god damn it! Yeah, that doesn't work. I was hoping I was hoping not to see this uh, the gizmos for the special collider, but yeah, that doesn't work. I mean, yeah. Yeah, let's just keep it like this. The top is not kept because, yeah, I don't have this. Uh, this area bigger than the radius of the tower, so 
or the height of the of the tower. Maybe. Yeah, let's make this uh, smaller for now. Yeah, let's something like this. Sure. Still looks pretty. Okay, let's let's end this task. One hour and forty minutes. That's that's an that's okay. It's almost double than what I no. It's more than triple than what I thought it would take. But it was fun figuring out the the math for for this circle. It was quite nice. So this is another feature. Publish. Oh, come on. Yeah, so now, unfortunately, we've run out of, um, we've run out of uh, tasks, or at least I don't have any more tasks that I planned for this. But I think we're gonna continue. So yeah, we've done, let's just mark this as done, because we've done it now. Um, this is also done. I think we're gonna we're gonna start working on the enemies and just uh, get rid of that uh, dummy enemy and make something uh, uh, smarter. Okay, we have the wave indicator. We have this button. Yeah, there are a lot of things that we've done today. But there are a lot more things that we have to do for for the game to be playable. Yeah, I think we're gonna start uh, working on the enemies. Uh, start, uh, yeah, start making uh, uh, the the base components for them. For yeah, so so we have the health. Um, yeah, I'll have to add components for yeah knowing how much money they, they, they do, the speed, damage, um, and the add functionality in, in for the damage for example we have to bring them to the to the tower's health so 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 the tower can take damage. Yeah. Yeah I think we're gonna start we're gonna start with this but first I'll take a short break and get myself some food. What's happening? Oh, thank you. My phone just told me that I'm streaming now, even though I started like, what, five hours ago? Okay, let's see what we can get. Or more like, what do I want to eat? Hmm. We can always go for this. But they don't have any... Any discount, so I'm gonna just keep it. This one has 30% off, so... That sounds more... Reasonable.
Okay, this. Fine. Come on. Processing, processing, do it. I wanna see you do it. Oh, come on, wait, what? God damn it. I ran out of money. Yep. Wait, where did the money? Hmm. I know I've paid that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's get some more money. Come on. Yep, oh, it worked. Cool. Okay, let's actually let's put it on uh, vibration mode. Okay. Cool. Okay. So so yeah, as I said. Uh, we're gonna start working on on the on the enemies. Uh, I haven't prepared any tasks for this. Um, or instead of basic, I might just make, just I'll try to make the one of them. So let's call it. Let's create. Yeah, create small enemy. Now let's find it in here. God damn it. Small enemy programming. Um, probably one hour it's gonna take. Um, yeah, probably an hour. Okay, let's start working on this. Let's track the time and let's start working on this. Um, Actually, I have I I want to do something before that, so uh, it's gonna be annoying if this throws errors, uh, if it doesn't have what it needs. So if collider is null or this is null, just return. Okay. The component is not set up. Is this anything else? No. Have the color. Yeah, that should do it. Save. Yeah. Publish. Okay, now back to the to the enemies. Let's uh, make our enemy in here. Small enemy. Let's start by doing the boiler stuff. So let's get an entity root. Let's get the children lock in here. Let's get a deduplicator. Actually, do we need a deduplicator? I don't think we need a deduplicator for this, because those are not entities that we're gonna save. So no, actually no, no deduplicator. We're gonna components. Let's add the entity update manager. Everything looks set up in here. That's nice. Let's add health. health. Uh, I know you don't have data. I'm gonna fix that real quick. There you go. Here's the health data. Cool. Uh, 
and we're, we're not gonna have anything for the UI. Um, let's actually look in the health data. So let's edit this. I want to see if I made it so uh, the UI variables are not uh, required. Ah, looks like it. So if they're not null, we're going to assign the value, but we can keep them null. Because we need them for the... This is the same component that we're going to... Uh, or actually, we are already using for the for the tower. And here we have the, the those variables for, for showing the health in the in the UI, but for the enemies, we won't need them. But yeah, let's just set some random health in here. The health stat, we're gonna make that, yeah, sure. Let's make here a folder. Let's call this small, uh, small enemy. Let's make a definition for him. So, Small enemy definition. I don't give. A, I don't care about the name. Um, let's create a small small enemy health stat. Let's add it here. Let's add it here as well. Yeah, we'll have to. Make proxy for this but right now we don't have it oh that's interesting I wonder how we can do that Okay, let's. I think this is for now everything that I'm gonna set up on the enemy. So let's put it in here. Let's put it in the definition. Okay, so now we have another enemy. Um, let's go to the enemies and look at this dummy enemy and see what it does. So, what does it do? Um, it looks at the life cycle it has a boolean for knowing if it's playing or not yeah yeah i'll have to make a, a component for the enemies so um yeah, for, for movement. And it's gonna do kind of what this uh, uh, dummy, dummy enemy does. It's gonna have the same functionality. So, let's see, how, how do we do that? Uh, let's make the, let's make it a new, a new class. So, enemy movement sure uh not cycle not uh, life cycle component but um entity component let's implement whatever there is to implement so complete load because right now we won't do anything in the load phase and from what i remember yeah this is directly a loadable so if we need anything from the life cycle, so yeah, we need we will need the life cycle component, or we need to do the same that we did here. Okay. So yeah, this might be the thing that we're gonna do in the load phase, actually. Maybe.
What's this? Okay. Okay, so let's make that uh, that other class, and uh, me movement data. Gonna be an entity entity data. Um, Public class, public uh, struct. Uh, actually, no, right, we're not going to implement those here. We're going to make a new file. This dot io. Let's make this partial and let's implement those two things so actually you know, right now there's nothing to implement except for in here so we're gonna return a new instance of this that's it public lifecycle service Um, tab group tabs dot base group and tabs dot internal tab. So here Let's um, look a bit at the, at the health component. There's, there's nothing that we save in here. Should we save everything in this in the data component, even the private thing? Or should we keep the private things in the in here? I mean, theoretically, everything should be here. Everything has data. So, yeah, for sure. We're gonna we're gonna save this here. This is gonna be a private. So private bool and update, which is false by default. Show in inspector and it's gonna be read only. And read only? Yeah. Uh no, it can't be private, it has to be public. Yeah. Let's copy this, let's paste it. So D dot Ah, he doesn't know about the data component, so let's make him aware of it by doing this. And update. This can be imported. D dot lifecycle service. There we go.
distance, time, speed. Yeah, there's a, there are a lot of things that we actually need in here. Actually, let's put the, this uh, side by side because actually that's uh, all we need from the dummy enemy. There's no other thing that we need. And there's no music again. Let's fix this. We can listen to... Hmm. <laughs> What should I choose? Pull it for my Valentine. Sure. Do we have the new stuff in here? No. Let's add first the new stuff. Uh, where's that? Nice. There we go. Let's add this to the library. Yeah. And I will have enough music for the whole duration of the task. What's happening with? My food is on the way. Okay, so getting back to this. So we need the distance. This time is from Unity, man. Come on, just import that. So we'll need to save this distance. We'll need to have we'll need to have the speed somewhere. And we'll need this reference to the game speed manager. We'll need to save the spline. There are a lot of things that we, we need in here, so uh, I don't care about this. So can update um, this uh, distance zero um, speed is one thing that we'll need. Uh, so the speed is gonna be a float. Yeah, but we're also gonna want a speed stat we're gonna need a link to this and this is not going to be early can update will be internal distance will be internal speed is not gonna be internal but it's gonna be on the generic tab as well as the stat this is not gonna be read only and why does it oh this okay And what else do we need? We need to save that uh, spline. So comp composite spline. And that uh, game speed manager. We need that as well. So let, let's replace those. D dot uh, distance, D dot speed, D dot uh, shit. Game speed manager. This is the spline. This is the spline. This is the distance. Okay, so everything is here. Uh, there is one other thing that I have to do. So the speed should be multiplied by. Yeah, with the way of. Uh, Where do, where do we get the the multipliers? We should get, uh, I guess, from the wave manager. That's who's gonna know about the multipliers. Let's see. Actually, no, for now. Let's just put a to do in here. Uh, get. Uh, Get speed. Uh, 
Yeah, but for now that's that's it. Let's uh, let's look at this uh, tab. Um, enemy movement, but no shit. Enemy movement data I want. And let's unlock the children. Wait, empty. There we go. And now everything is in here. So we have light service, team speed manager. Hmm, those are internals. I should uh, switch them so the general is the first. So let's grab everything and put them afterwards. Let's make that that speed stat uh, indented. And now that I think about it, uh, uh, I don't need that showing inspector because those things are not private. Yeah, uh, this as well. Everything public, so it will be shown in the inspector. Can I make some space in here? Um, let's put some space there. Awesome. So now in general we'll have speed and then we have the link for which we don't have a, a stat yet. So let's make a stat for that. Think small enemy speed stat. Let's do the definition. Enemy movement. Let's add here. So I don't know. Let's put the speed of five. Okay. Uh, one other thing, let's add a rendering component, let's add also a, a sphere. Yeah, cool. So we have a sphere, let's make a material for this, so we make it uh, Let's make him red. There we go. And let's lock the children. Cool. So we have our our small enemy. Now let's see what do we have to do? Um, actually, all I have to do now is to use it. So let's go to the, let's close the scripts and let's go to our waves. I think I'm going to delete all those other waves and just keep, uh, just keep the one. I'm going to use this. Um, why is this not working? Oh, now it is, okay. Yeah, this is not correct. Let's put the health there. It's fine now. And let's go to the level. Now it's, yeah. There we go. We only have one, one wave. Let's play this. Oh, damn. Um, damn, this looks so awesome. Okay, so uh, where are my managers? Managers, level, let's play this level. And now this doesn't work. It does make sense. 
because our enemy spawner yeah we forgot to change our enemy spawner let's put it here okay so to do use multipliers oh yeah oh I set the multipliers from here yeah that's a way of doing it i guess yeah that would work So, uh, enemy movement data. I'll get the spline, sign the spline. Okay. Let's see if this is everything. Yeah. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's uh, wait for it to pile. Okay, again. Okay, the wave started. Technically. Uh, now let's look at the enemy spawners. So the spawner, wait. The sp Honor is not enabled, which is not a good sign. And yeah, now there is something that we have to do with the enemies. We have to load them if they're not loaded. Hmm. So right now in framework I don't have any function for loading an entity at runtime um, add this functionality for for our previous previous game the Equinox Hunt where I've made this uh, this library this uh, uh, yeah the library called the yes framework but it was not a very general way uh, yeah gen it wasn't a generic way of doing it of doing this uh, runtime uh, loading so i uh, i just didn't uh, didn't move it when the when i finished the project i didn't include it in this version of the of the library and i said whenever i need that functionality that i'm going to add it and make it generic and I guess this is the time, because now we're going to have entities which are going to be spawned by the by those object pools. And we'll have to load the enemies whenever they are spawned. Well, ideally we would have um, an object pool for enemies as well. But for now, we're just gonna instantiate them and then discard them afterwards. We're not gonna deal with uh, with object pools for for entities. Uh, for... Man, what's happening? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, somehow have to load those uh, enemies when we spawn. Which I'm not sure entirely how to do. I mean, I know I know what I have to do. I don't know. Um, yeah, I know how to do it. I don't know to do it um i guess the most simple way of doing it is okay, we instantiate it we do the assignment there and then Okay, 
get component children of type double for each loadable I'm gonna just load it yeah this would be the the, the most simple way of doing it I guess I don't, I don't think I have to do anything else but I can check so I can look at the at the basic loader so this is the component that does the loading at the start of the yeah when the when the when the, when the, um, the scene starts or the game starts so let's see what what am I doing here. So we get, I get all the doubles, whatever. I look at how many there are, yada yada. But this is the most important part. Yeah, I just load them. I just call load on them. I don't do anything else. I I listen for the for when the loading is done, so I can trigger other ones. But uh, for in this case, I just have to load everything and just forget about it. So let's try that. This might just work, but I haven't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's just gonna work though. This is the first time I tried it. Okay, 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 okay. Something is happening. The following error occurred in health. <laughs> object reference not set to an instance of an object. Indeed, it's not. You're entirely right. Yeah, so I have to do that, uh, I have to do that proxy for the health. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so we've done something last time for for the health component. So, so one one task that I had uh, last week was to make the health component generic, and that was so the problem that 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 uh, yeah the problem that we had here was that um, I need um, yeah I need the way to get the the multiplayer for 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 the health stat. And if it's uh, if it's for the tower, we need to get the uh, the multiplier from the upgrades manager. If it's not the tower, if it's an enemy, we have to get it from somewhere else. I made this uh, this proxy, which is a uh, which is a class or whatever. It's actually an interface uh, which is implemented by a class, and this class is for the upgrades manager, so for the tower. And we need we need to do a similar one for the For the enemies, which would be, I guess, waves manager proxy, something like that. Uh, not waves, wave with the. Let's import this. Let's actually name this so it's wave manager. And we're gonna look at the wave manager. And we wanna get a multiplier for stat. Uh, what we also what what do we also so we also need the on top of the the wave manager we also need the type of enemy that this is so public. Um, Enemy definition, enemy definition. So it would be something like this. So let's implement this method. It's gonna return a float, enemy definition. We're gonna get a stat link and we're gonna return something. I don't know what we're gonna return. Okay, so we'll have to look at, oh, I guess, wait, oh, oh my, my, uh, my food has just arrived, 
Yep, I just see the dude coming up to the building. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna take a short break and we're gonna come back to this. I'll have to wait for the for that person to come. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. What? Did we run out of songs already? No. No, it's starting now. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, so so we have to get the the multiplayer uh, um, from the way manager. now it's looking that I'm not saving this wave definition asset anywhere so I should probably save it because I need it for for the lookup right here so let's just put it somewhere um, let's put it here Okay, so how do we do this? Var something is gonna be this dot enemies dot first or default. No, first, first or default. Should I throw an error? I mean, I could throw. 
I could throw an error myself. Yeah, yeah, sure. First or default. E dot enemy should be equal to enemy definition. Wave enemy definition, yeah. If this is null, and find enemy type. Let's put a dollar sign here. And type. In wave. Yeah. Multiply dot uh first or default m dot stat equals stat link And actually, we're not going to throw an error here, so return multiplier, not multiplier, otherwise we're going to return a, a 1, 1f. One so if we have find a multiplier, we're going to return it, otherwise we're just going to return a multiplier of 1. It's basically not going to uh, mess with our... Uh, with our values, because if you multiply anything by one, it's gonna be, it's gonna remain the same. Okay, so we have this, this, this function. We have this proxy. So now all we have to do is go back to our, um, I think, enemy manager, no, enemy spawner, and here on of uh, setting up the end uh, the enemy movement we have uh, yeah we're gonna need the uh, get component health data we're gonna need the health data and uh, actually uh, rename this enemy movement not data just enemy movement this is health get multiplier stats for proxy and we want a new wave manager proxy enemy definition wave this enemy and the wave manager is do i have a reference to the wave manager i don't have one but i need it so let's do that And I don't think I can. Yes, uh, yes, I can. I need the reference, but I need to get the reference. So I'm going to get it from or during the setup. So this is the wave manager. Let's assign it there with an underscore in front. So like this. And now in enemy manager, we're just gonna say this. No. Oh, this is the enemy manager. I need the wave manager. <sighs> yeah, so here I can get this. We're, on, we're in a manager territory, so now I can get the wave manager. So the reason why I, why I can't have the manager in here is because um, this uh, enemy spawner comes from a 
an object pool and it's uh, instantiated at runtime. So yeah, I can't uh, and and our our managers are game objects in a scene, so I can make a, I can reference them. So I have to to pass the the values. And let's not forget to save this. There we go. We have it here, and now we can go to our enemy manager and just save a reference to the wave manager. There we go. And now, now I think we have everything we need for this to work. So let's try another level. Invoke. Still doesn't work. <laughs> Wait, what? I forgot to add a check here. Not a problem. If this is different from null, uh, I had checks in the in those functions here, but not in the load. But it's good. If we reach this place, this is amazing because uh, it means that we've passed the multiplayer uh, proxy problem. So let's try it again. Yeah, I think I think now it's gonna work correctly. Now it's gonna work just fine. Okay, level manager. Let's get this invoke and uh, well, that's that was a good try. <laughs> Let's look at them, see if everything is correct on them. Uh, I can't see the proxy in here, which is not cool, because I would like to see it. Uh, I can turn on debug mode, I guess, and I can see the proxy then. Yes, I can. Yeah, so I have small entity definition, base manager, which is this. So yeah, so the, the proxy is set up correctly. Um... Why did it not work? Is a good question. That's a good question. Why did it not work? Let's put a Oh, yeah, I know I know exactly why it didn't work. Because I've uh, I don't have Yeah. So on this um yeah, sure. Let's add it here. Add to transform runtime. I haven't added it to the spawned enemies list. In handle enable disable, yes, I want to handle that. So, so the the system didn't know that that uh, enemy any enemies were spawned, so it just assumed they were not. So let's try this again. Um. Yeah, sure. Let's try it now. It should work now. Should. Should, but it doesn't. <laughs> Why does it not work? Wait. Hello. Hello, little fella. Why are you there? Why are you not moving? You are loaded, playing, and has played once, but... What is my entity component? My entity movement component. Why isn't it here? What's happening here? Uh what? Oh. I destroyed it. That's not correct. I have to Actually, I don't have to destroy the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to destroy the root. Yeah. I mean, not the root, but the root game object. For now, this doesn't make any sense actually. Because here I would have to damage the crystal and stuff like that, but 
yeah for now just I'm gonna just destroy the the entity but but that didn't work that did that, that did not work so let's try it again so the level definition invoke let's pause let's let's look at our enemies so so they're here but I have no idea why they're, why they're here or do I if I go here can update can update is true it has a spline even the distance goes oh because I'm setting the transform position not the root transform position I'm basically moving the component the the enemy the enemy component instead of the whole entity so yeah my bad let's try this again now it should work uh level manager level definition invoke there we have them look at them going Go little fellas. God damn it, they're so slow. Let's turn on fast mode. Because that's why we've implemented it. Now they're gonna get out. And damn, we have the cooldown. We have intelligent enemies. This is amazing. And now the wave started again. Awesome. This is actually awesome. Yeah, and this is gonna keep going definitely. So we have new 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 enemies. Let's get rid of those uh, dummy enemies. First, let's get rid of this, and then let's get rid of everything in here. So this do this, delete those, and uh, actually no, that's it. Because in the waves, they're not referenced anymore. Yeah, this is it. Oh, and now we can do something. So we can change the multiplier here. So instead of 1, let's put a 10 in here. They should be so fast. So, so fast. <laughs> um hello <laughs> oh my bad this is the health i'm stupid um that's the health i haven't set up the the speed or the multiplier for the speed yeah, yeah they have one one thousand health instead of 100 yeah my bad uh let's set up the yeah, let's add up the multiplier for the speed as well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make uh, an enemy movement in here. But should I make it in run? No, I should make it in run time. So let's make it in here. Let's make a folder for this. Enemies. Uh, movement. Let's move those. No, let's make a runtime folder. And now let's move those three files. Enemies dot uh, movement dot runtime. I'm not gonna fix anything yet. Because first I'll have to. To create that assembly reference. So movement runtime here. Let's create this reference. Runtime play. And now it should just work um, as expected. Yeah, no more errors. 
but now the question is uh our enemy know those scripts anymore mm, no he doesn't Entity, no, enemy. How can I trigger a compile in here? Uh, I can do. I can change to release mode because I have compiler errors. Um, let's add a space and save. Yeah, that true. Uh, this still doesn't work. Wait, what? Oh. Now it's gonna work. There we go. Let's look at our enemy now. Yep, we have the, en uh, the enemy movement. Let's look at this component too. Yeah, this looks fine too. Okay, so uh, actually I, I need to be here. So let's get a reference to... Wait, what re we need a reference to the wave manager. So it's gonna be more like this. Yeah. And now let's go back to the enemy spawner. And here. Yeah. Enemy movement dot uh wave manager is wave manager. And we go back here and oh shit, I don't know what enemy this is. Times D dot um uh, wave manager dot get multiplier for stat, yeah. I don't know the enemy but I know the stat because it's speed stat. Let's add this as well. What type of enemy am I? Uh, let's add a space in here. Enemy B dot enemy. Save, go back, and now let's make those uh, changes in here. So let's add a the the speed stat. Now make, let's make this uh, a ten. Let's uh, get the bat the the health back to one. So now, if this works correctly, we should get some um, enemies that are running through the course. I mean, they could they could go slowly if they want. What the heck? What the heck? I don't get it. So it has the wave manager. Oh, both are... Wait, what? Oh, both are for speed. What the heck did I do? No, I want health. This is health with a 1, this is speed with a 10. And one thing I've just realized is... 
is I should probably calculate this only once maybe because this might be expensive I mean nah it's not expensive what 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 is this I'm looking at for a list with only one element and then looking at the list with two elements no this should be fine I mean and and we won't have the the quantity of uh, of uh, enemies that would make this code uh, be slow. God damn it, this still doesn't work. Okay, I need to, uh, to put a breakpoint because I don't know why it doesn't work. Let me movement here. There we go. So we have the wave manager. Let's get into this. We have a wave enemy definition, that is nice. Spawn enemy speeds that. Let's look at the multipliers. We have two multipliers. Small enemy speeds that. Wait, what? I've changed that in... I think I've changed that, yeah. Yeah, I think I've changed this at uh, at runtime and it uh, didn't save. Let's try it again. Still there. If, if it doesn't work now. Okay, so we have a, a bug. Yeah, okay, so this is definitely a bug. So somehow we override this. Oh, of course we do. Where, where, where was that? This has to be a double equal, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, hey motion, uh, sorry for not seeing. Yeah, I'm, I'm still streaming. Um, yeah, I, I'm quite enjoying doing uh, doing stuff here. I've done some uh, some crazy component uh, a while ago. Let's see if it works now. Invoke. There we go. Look at them going so fast. Bam! And let's get normal speed. And even with normal speed, they're still fast. Nice. Okay, so we have we have uh, basically replaced the dummy enemies. And now we have something more, um, yeah, structured, which is this, an enemy which has health and uh, the movement. So yeah, there are there are. I was thinking what what's left uh, to do for this. There are a lot of things to do. So one of the things would be. Yeah, we have to make it uh, damage the tower when it reaches the top. That's one of the things we have to also... Uh, let's see. So yeah, damage the tower. We, uh, we have to make it... Uh, what else do I have to do? Oh, yeah, so, so, so I have to introduce Karmis into the game. Let me get the... Yeah, so we have the health. Uh, yeah, so the damage is for damaging the tower. But yeah, we need to enter the currency in the game so we can gain money. We did a speed, so we have speed. This is what we've just done. So yeah, those uh, these are the two things left to do for... 
but this for the small enemy. But yeah, we'll need some some things in here. So we'll need a reference to the tower for us to do damage to the tower. And we'll also need yeah to make this uh, uh, this uh, currency thing. So we need to save the money somewhere. But yeah, I. I think we're gonna stop here for now. Um, it's good that we have this. Uh, yeah, we no longer have the dummy, the dummy enemy. We have. Uh, we're starting to to progress on this. Actually, let me stop the timer for this. Yeah, look at this. One hour and four minutes. Yeah. And yeah, the most the most amazing thing that that we've done is this uh, this magic component. This is the best thing. I I really like this. Yeah, yeah, I really like how this uh, how this turned out. Yeah, and then yeah, we've done the whole level manager thing when you can uh, start a game by a level, and it's gonna run indefinitely. First by. Uh, the the lev the waves sequentially and after that we're gonna we're running them uh... oh you're back that was classic yeah I I knew when I saw the I mean when I saw the error in the edit I knew exactly that 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 was the problem uh, so the cylinder component is um yeah so so we're gonna use colliders or not obviously we're gonna use capsule colliders for uh for um weapons so so this is this will be the area in which the 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 um the enemy will be detected and the weapon will start firing and I wanted something that looks more pretty than this thing from unity and it something that makes more sense with uh, with how how the game is made so we've or yeah we've made this so this is a component that renders so it, it's basically the same uh, it has the same radius as the as the capsule collider but instead of rendering a capsule is just uh, like a section from it so this yeah, there's a circle and the other circle is projected onto the tower, so it has the same uh, the same curvature as the as the tower. It, it's just yeah, just just it's just an indicator, so we know yeah when you see an uh, an enemy yeah you you know if it's inside the the detection area of the weapon. And it was. Uh, yeah, it was quite fun to to figure out how to draw this uh, this circle to be to be flush with the tower. This uh, so it has this uh, this nice curvature here. But yeah, basically it's 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 for the for the editor. So when we want to debug a weapon and or see what uh, what the area is for, yeah, when it's gonna when it's gonna trigger, yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna have this. Yeah, it's it's made with uh, gizmos. So let me bring it up real quick. Actually, where have I put it? Uh, weapons. So yeah, is this? Is this whole piece of code, which looks, I mean, it took like what 
almost two hours to make, but uh, yeah, basically it draws. So I start from from this. Uh, Hello, hero. Yeah, loads of math. Uh, here is uh, one of the pictures from when I was trying to work out how to do this. Uh, a lot of yeah, <laughs> yeah, math. Ooh, white paint. Uh, because it's easier to just fire up paint and just draw something because it's only for me. So if I wasn't streaming, I would do stuff on paper, but if I'm streaming, yeah, uh, I'll just do it in paint. But yeah, loads of math to make this, uh, this circle, uh, be projected onto the tower. So it has the same, uh, the same curvature, uh, on, a, on, a... Uh, stupid what? You refer to me using paint or what? Okay. I mean, as I said, if I would just do it for myself, if I was not streaming, I would just write on the pa on on paper with a with a with a pencil. But uh, yeah, it it wouldn't be that uh, interesting if I don't show the process of figuring out uh, what I'm doing. I mean, I could use Illustrator, but uh, yeah, this is just a quick sketch. So I, I don't need it to look pretty, it's just something that I that I do to visualize the problem. It's not gonna end up anywhere. And I think it it more <laughs> Yeah Yeah I know but I but I think just it's it's just just for yeah, just to visualize it so yeah I could use whatever but firing up paint is uh, is the easiest thing but yeah anyway so yeah this is this is something that i've done today so this this uh, component and it's yeah as i said it, it was quite fun to work out the math for for drawing circle this circle projected onto the tower it has some problems so for example if you make the the circle too big um yeah i'm not gonna cap it it's outside of the the bounds of the of the module uh, vertically and horizontally yeah it's just gonna just end here at the yeah at the edge of the module but yeah this this won't happen this or, or more like this shouldn't happen you shouldn't have a weapon that just uh, can be triggered for yeah the whole yeah half of the half of the module that would that wouldn't be the case, so I didn't cover the case. But yeah, we're just gonna have small, small components like this. And I mean, for for this, uh, if you have this component s small like 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 this, uh, it actually even doesn't matter that that I that this curvature. But still, it was a it was an interesting math problem to solve. So let's discard this. Let's just look again at how this how this works. So yeah, so so yeah. The last thing that I've done was uh, started working on the enemies and making them uh, uh, make the enemies a little bit bigger so so I can see them. Cause they're way too small. Let's unlock children. So we can edit this. Uh, uh, no, just no. Three times bigger should be enough. Okay, let's lock thing again and let's spawn. 
Yeah, that's better. So the enemies are spawned, they go to the top, they reach the top, they basically die. And after that, a cooldown starts. After which, a new... A new wave uh, starts. Okay, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> uh, I'm curious. Yeah, but thanks for stopping by. And I can't wait to have to have weapons in here. And just start uh start shooting uh shooting enemies. It's gonna be so nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think I think I'm gonna stop here with the stream. Um Yeah, I hope so too. Motion. Uh, yeah, we really need art for this game. It's gonna the, the art is gonna matter. Yeah, it's gonna matter a lot. Um, yeah, we are gonna find an artist. That's that's for sure. Where we're gonna find him? Yeah, no idea. But uh, we definitely need an artist. Or her, yeah, my bad. Um, yeah, so let's uh, commit this uh, this change. And, uh, so the feature publish. Oh come on, you stupid. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so I, I guess I guess this is end the stream. Um, next week we're gonna continue working on the on the enemies. So yeah, we're gonna start. So yeah, today we've done the health and speed for the enemy, and uh, next week we're gonna work on the damage. So we're we're gonna somehow link the enemies uh, to the tower. So so the tower takes damage when the enemies reach reach the top. And we're also gonna do the money, so we'll have to introduce currency in the game and somehow store the currency. And actually, I don't think about it. No, okay, no, this, yeah, no, this is this, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna introduce money. So when when you kill an enemy, you're gonna gain, uh, uh you're gonna gain, uh or something um yeah we thought about making the mobile game uh i don't think we're gonna make it for mobile so for sure it's gonna come on steam mobile is just a whole no a whole another market it's really different from from what we've done so i don't think we're gonna we're gonna go there we we've thought about it because it it works so well on mobile this game yeah for yeah but the beginning we're gonna try we're gonna try desktop and yeah maybe maybe we're, we're gonna do mobile but uh yeah we'll see it's totally made for <laughs> it's totally made for mobile i mean or, or at least uh we we had in mind mobile when we made this so so yeah, for sure it, it it can be ported to to mobile. But uh, yeah, uh, as I said at the beginning, we're gonna we're gonna go for um, we're gonna go for for desktop, and uh, we'll see if we go to mobile or not. But yeah, it's gonna be it's it's a totally different market. I mean, nothing on the market, but just 
just think of the the for Linux we can do it. I don't know if you've seen, probably not, but uh, we've released uh, a Linux build for the Equinox hunt. Uh, like I don't know, uh, ah, the, uh, when the when the summer sale started, we released the. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we made a we made a Linux a Linux build. It took me like I don't know when when did I start? I think in March I started working on the Linux build. I had to update Unity twice, I guess the the Unity version because it had different bugs on on Linux. I was not able to debug the so 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 I was not able to play the game on Linux myself because because uh, because we've used HDRP. Um, you can't run the the game in in a VM because it needs uh, the it needs the uh, Vulkan, and that doesn't work in in VMs. A whole lot of problems. How many? It wasn't that. It it wasn't hard to do. So okay, except uh, yeah. So so there were Unity problems with it. So. There were there were some bugs in because because we were in um, what were we using uh, 2019.3 and I did an upgrade to to dot four so we were on LTS and after that I had to do the jump to 2020 LTS because there was a bug in HDRP and Linux and uh, I had to make that jump to to, to fix it uh, but no the experience was quite great so. The builds just worked. Um, there were a couple of things that that I had to add, so I so I added a new a new setting in the yeah in the in the game settings for uh, yeah. So there's a magical number or not a magical number. So so um, you can have a, a number of frames that are queued up, and so they are rendered but they are not yet displayed on the screen. And you can have uh, a couple of uh, frames that are um just waiting to be to be drawn on the screen and uh yeah that number by default is two but for linux uh, from our testing uh you have to set that to one otherwise you're gonna have input lag but yeah uh it wasn't that hard the the, the worst part uh, was uh not being uh, not being able to test it so i never tested it i had a we had a we had another person testing it that the Linux installed directly on the computer. I'm not sure if it's fixed in 2020. I can I can uh, search for the bug that I'm referring to. I'm not sure. I know for sure it's it's uh, fixed in the in the 2020 TS. I'm not sure if it's fixed in 2020.1. So let me. Uh, Linux uh, set resolution HD HDRP black screen bug Chiva, uh, something like this HDRP model no uh, I said Linux yeah no it has to have Linux in the I mean it's not crashing. Uh, I know to check because I can go on. I know where to find it if I want to. So yeah, here it is. Nope, not this. I don't want the the. I want this link, not the message from Discord. Yeah. Uh, this is fixed in 2020.3 in the LTS version. So the problem is that if you try to change the resolution, your materials just won't work. <laughs> Uh, 
Hello, Shippy. Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, yeah, it is a problem. Because the, the error that you get, it doesn't really make sense. So it's not something that, okay, you see it and, uh, yeah, you know exactly what's happening. And I have no idea how this is related to, to the material working. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just, uh, is kind of the, the end of the stream, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I was just, uh, talking about, um, some bugs we, we found out, uh, on our game when we made the, the Linux build. But yeah, yeah, so this, this is the big one that we found, this, uh, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, just by upgrading to the... 2020 LTS should should fix it. I mean, it did fix it for us. Okay. Is this still working? Uh, I haven't started it. I can't wait to make this game work. I really want to play it. Let's make those enemies uh, not go so fast. Yeah, I can't wait to, to, to be able to put uh, weapons on here and start shooting those enemies. That's gonna be so nice. Yeah. Man, the camera is so slow. I should make it. I should make it faster. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this the stream. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, we're. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by and thanks for the follow. Yeah, it's uh, it's really appreciated. And yeah, if you if you wanna see, uh, at at least for the time being, uh, I'm gonna do the streaming. But if you wanna see me uh, work on this game, and actually, I can I can probably show you the the prototypes we have an idea of what we're trying to do here so let's fire up the prototype for this game so it's a so it's a top defense game um, and uh, the whole action um, happens on an actual tower so that's that's the whole idea of the game you you play on an actual tower and yeah, it's just a basic uh, tower defense. You you have enemies, uh, you have waves of enemies, um, and you can place uh, you can place weapons on the tower to kill those enemies. And by doing so, you get money, so you so you can uh, build more weapons, upgrade them, and whatnot. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the prototype. Those are our, those are the enemies. You can create, uh, as I said, you can create uh, towers, and you can uh, upgrade them so they become more powerful. And uh, your uh, your goal is to protect this uh, crystal from uh, at the top of the tower. Uh, yeah, so you have to keep uh, to to stop the enemies from reaching the 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 top of the tower. That's basically the the whole idea right now. I mean, the the whole idea of the game. And yeah, for now, in, in or, or at least in the in the prototype, we only have one type of enemy and one type of weapon. But uh, we're planning for more uh, in the in the finished game. But yeah, this is more like a proof of concept. So so we know that it works and uh, it is 
it is actually fun to play. Yeah, now I have I have like a lot of money. I, I mean, I've started with a lot of money because I would, I was doing some testing uh, last time I played it. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, you. Oh, and also you have so on top of uh, having weapons that uh, that fire automatically for you. Uh, you also have uh, uh, um, you have powers, so you can uh, shoot enemies yourself. So in case you you see them uh, see them reaching the top and you think that your weapons are not gonna are gonna are not gonna kill them in time, you can use your uh, your weapons, your your powers. I mean, and you have a cooldown for them, and yeah, that's kind of it. But yeah, that's the that's the basic uh, the basic idea of the game. You will have multiple waves on on a on a section of the tower, and after you finish those waves, uh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna continue, or the tower is gonna continue to grow, and you're gonna just uh, go to the next uh, portion of the tower and uh, start battling with uh, uh, more powerful enemies. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, this is it. Yeah, I'm you know, for 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 the for the prototype, the the tower is built manually. But uh, but this uh, yeah, the actual is uh, is using procedural generation. So the tower the tower is built uh, procedurally. So every time you get a, a different one. And um, yeah, the tower is modular. You ha we have uh, small pieces that uh, the game knows how to combine to make up the to make up the tower. Yeah. Oh, I'm in play mode. And you can also, I, I mean. If, the, the the functionality is there, but it's not actually called from the game. But so you have by default you have yeah a tower with a, with a size or made out of five modules, but you can expand it. So let's say I want another five modules. There you go. I j oh, I just got uh, the next five modules, and they are perfectly linked to the, to the previous modules. So yeah. That, that's the idea. So you you can just uh, get more of the tower, and it's gonna continue. Um, yeah, the, you're you're not gonna see any any seams between the the modules. They're gonna just gonna be they're just gonna continue from where they were. So yeah, uh, at least for the tower, yeah, we're totally using procedural generation. Yeah, we plan to have a lot of a, a lot of levels for the game. Uh, a level being uh, like uh, so, in a level you would have like I don't know ten waves, and we have it was it's just a, it's just a, a number, but uh, we haven't committed to it. Uh, we thought about maybe we can do like a hundred levels in total. So. We thought, and, and for 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 each level, uh, you'll get a different uh, uh, a different uh, a different uh, section of the tower to play on. So it, we definitely need the procedural generation for that. I mean, we could do the tower and have 100 pieces there, but uh, or what 100 levels in the, in the tower. But uh, yeah, that would be. 
hard to do and you would, you wouldn't have any replayability so by doing it like this where you you just make the modules and the game just assembles the tower you you're totally going to have a replayability in the, in the game cuz you know like right now there are like what 2 3 4 5 7 modules but let's say that we have like 40 modules or more uh yeah the the, the tower is going to be pretty unique each time you play so you you will for sure have replayability in the game and there are other things that, that are going to play into this but uh, but the tower is the main thing Yeah, and, and uh, so so I'm not sure how how long the tower will be or how many modules we'll have for each level. But uh, yeah, as I said, after you finish a level, um, say so I'm playing right now, and this is the tower that I'm playing on. Let's say I finished ten waves. After that, I can uh, I can increase the size of the tower. Um, after after I increase the size of the tower, or I go to the next level, basically uh, I won't have access to 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 the to the, to the piece of the tower that I, that I was playing on uh, before. I only have access to the to the new uh, to the new section of the tower. But uh, yeah, right now we have five modules, but let's say after um, a couple of ways we can make it more, so we can have ten modules. So now you have a, a bigger tower that you can play, or a, yeah, a bigger uh, playing area. But yeah, after a couple of waves, um, you'll get a new, a new, a new piece of the tower to play on. So yeah, it's basically like like maps in uh, in a regular tower defense. You have multiple maps and you play on them. But the difference is that on our game, you you play on the tower and the tower is. Uh, great indefinitely or can grow indefinitely yeah yeah for for now for now i'm just doing the functionality so we can so we can actually play with it because yeah, i haven't hard coded anything in the code so Everything is, uh, yeah, change it anytime we want. But yeah, first of all, we have to, we have to have all the basic uh, elements of the game in place. Like right now, I'm doing the enemies. Then I'm gonna do uh, the weapons, and after that, we're gonna have a basic gameplay loop, so we can start actually playing the game. And after that, we we just we start adding the rest of the stuff that we that we and we see how it feels we can think about how it would uh, function and look like for many many hours but uh, we yeah we have to actually play the game to see to see how how it feels and if it's if it's okay to do it in a certain way Yeah, so, okay, as I said, um, I'm going to stop the stream here. So, motion, uh, if you need any, or if you decide to, to do anything on Linux, if you have any questions, I can I can maybe maybe help, because I've, I've gone through the pains of uh, making the build for Linux. <laughs> and, yeah, if you're not using HDRP, it should be easier. Because you you can test it in a, in a so if you do it with with a built-in renderer or UI you can uh, easily play the game in a virtual machine. But if you're using HDRP, there's no way 
you, you need to have uh, a dedicated PC with Linux installed to, to, to play it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, yeah. If I if you have any questions, then you can ask. Maybe I can help. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 If you're using HDRP. Yeah. Good luck with that. We we we've had uh, <laughs> uh, we had uh, a lot of issues with it, small issues, but. We we actually needed it because in in the Equinox Hunt we had uh, so so each each hunter had the light and um, we never knew how many hunts would be on the screen and uh, RP had a had a limit of four lights per screen or actually four lights enabled anywhere in the scene after which um, yeah if you enable another one. Um, uh, some other light is gonna be disabled automatically, so you'll only have a limit of, of uh, four. Um, so yeah, we we definitely needed HD for uh, for deferred rendering, but now URP also has deferred uh, rendering from from the from the yeah from the latest version. So yeah, this is actually. But uh, but yeah. Yeah. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the, the stream here. Um, yeah. Thanks for being here, and see you next Saturday. Bye bye.